Well, hey everybody. Hi, how are you? Karen Bryant here with you. How's it going? So, uh, I'm on time. My cuckoo clock was just cuckooing. I turned the music part off this week because I thought, you know, we don't necessarily need that music playing at the top of the hour. So I did, it, I am on time. Speaking of music though, I remember I have some music I can play. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to festivities episode. <clears throat> it's not episode, excuse me. It's episode 77 with um, Brandon Roy. So, sorry, you guys really need a sip of water. Brandon Royval, raw dog, is going to be on with me and Hanato uh, tonight. For those who don't know, I uh, am Karen Bryant. So I uh, am a UFC anchor. I have been for uh, like 11 years now. 10, 10, going on 11 years or whatever. <clears throat> My goodness. And I've covered MMA for quite some time. So, uh, before that. So, Done the for, for a minute before that, I did a lot of entertainment stuff. Uh, so, I've, you know, I've been around for a second. Hanato, 27 time Jiu Jitsu champion, and really um, sort of a, I don't want to say patron saint, but he's he's definitely, I will give him his, I gotta give him his props. He is, um, you know, quite accomplished in the, in, in the area of Jiu Jitsu, not as well accomplished in the area of interpersonal relationships, although he believes himself to be a master of that as well. Um, so anyway, we talk about MMA, we talk about life, we talk about pop culture, we talk about all kinds of stuff. So, welcome to the show, episode 77, and it's here on YouTube, it's on Twitter, it's on Twitch, it's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, and um, Stitcher. So there you go. So hi. So that's the, uh, that's the part of it, I should say. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube or whatever, hit that sub button. I, you know, I've been watching some other videos and things of people and... I don't sell enough, you know, I don't say like hit that sub button and don't forget to like super chat and stuff like that. So uh, hit that sub button and don't forget to super chat. That's me remembering to do that now. So that was me um, finally trying to remember to do that. And I need to, I can't, every time I, I keep playing the intro, I'm like, oh, uh, I need to change it. I need to update it. Like I've been meaning to, I have a minute. I think I can try to get that done this week. No, I think I can try to get it done. What would Yoda say? That's a weak statement, KB. I think I can try to get it up. Try not. Right? Hi. Wow. Hi, Suavecito6. <laughs> Welcome. It's going downhill fast. I'm already quoting Star Wars. And I'm only three minutes into the show. Nerd alert. Nerd alert. Art Rios. Hey, he says another night with KB and Uncle Nodge, but more can you ask for? Thank you. Thanks for being here. I, I, got, I honestly... I do look forward to doing these every Tuesday night. It's a lot of fun to see you guys. And listen, tonight, Royval's a trip. So he's a, he's a ball of energy. And I you know, uh, used to do a podcast with Angela Hill, and we had him on that one one time, and he was hilarious. He's got a lot of energy. Let me just put it that way. He's a uh, trains out of Factory X in Colorado, and uh, he is um, fighting in, in Kansas City. Matthäus Nikolaou, so a uh, good fight coming up, and he's currently ranked number four, so in the flyweight division. So every fight obviously matters, but especially for Brandon, it really does. And like I said, he's just a very entertaining guy, and he, he has a lot of energy. So, um, <clears throat> oh, little seal, yeah. We can talk about that merger. I can wait till Hinato gets here. Um, he might know a little bit more about, about wrestling than I do. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, like, I'm, I don't know that much about it. I don't know if I could say that out loud, but I really don't. Um, I know people like it. Hi, uh, Dura Wins. Hi, how are you? Um, oh, are you, um, 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 oh, well, thank you, JS. I'm <laughs> looking hot for it. <laughs> And hi, Andy. Not funny. Saying no sound. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, well, well. Don't do that. You can't stress me out like that. I'm not. I'm not tech savvy. And uh, last time when that happened, I was able to avert, you know, a complete crisis. But uh, I literally knock wood and pray to the tech gods every time I do this show because anyway. 
Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so hi, Backflow Don. How are you? Um, oh, Andy's getting ready to drive to Miami tomorrow. Good for you. That is going to be a great weekend. Yeah, that'll be fun. Good for you. Um, um, da, da, da. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, um, what's that? What was that? What was that? Uh-huh. Welcome back. Somebody said, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, well, oh yes, welcome to the show, Lil Seal. Hi, welcome to the show. Hey, so, <clears throat> uh, um, last week we had Billy Q on, Billy Quarantillo, and he is fighting next, um, uh, next weekend at UC Kansas City as well. So he's going to be on the same card as Brandon Royval. So if you have not seen that show yet, you definitely should. We had a really good time, and um, it, I maybe anyway. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, the link is is you know it's it's right here on YouTube. Uh, if you're looking at this on festivities.com, whatever, it's right here too. Um, we had a really uh, fun conversation with Billy. He stayed for like over an hour. Such a good kid. And we talked about all kinds of stuff, but he's got a big fight coming up as well against Edson Barboza. That's the co-main event. So this is going to be a hell of a night. We're getting Royval versus Nicolau. We are getting Billy Q versus Edson Barboza. And all that is before Max Holloway versus Arnold Allen. So it's going to be a good one in Kansas City. I'm looking forward. I'm going to be there for that one. So looking forward to going there and uh, and working that one. So my point on that is just that you should go back and check out last week's show if you missed it before because it was really good and Billy was just a great guest and we talked about all kinds of stuff and yeah, he was very, very cool. So you should definitely go back and check that one out. Um, also coming up this weekend, you know, is... <clears throat> UFC 287. Gilbert Burns was a guest of ours not too long ago. So if you want to check that one out, uh, and I'm trying to think there was a, uh, Adrian Yanez who is from the card. So, oh, actually KB, you know this. I have the list right here. I knew I was going to keep this um, close by so that I could tell you guys exactly this. Okay, so it, it sucks because, you know, like on this one, um, a few of our friends are fighting each other. So that always kind of sucks. Um, <clears throat> But, you know, it is what it is. So Rob Font was on with us on episode 32. Um, we had Adrian Yanez on episode 41. So those two guys are fighting each other, you know. Uh, that is going to be a hell of a fight. We had on uh, Gilbert Burns. Dorino was on episode 65. And I feel like there might be somebody else coming up on um on this fight card that was on our show too but i can't remember right now because it's a big fight card but uh yeah i feel like i feel like uh yeah um 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 let's see let's see um what was i gonna say so um yeah, the Adrian Yanez Rob Font fight is going to be pretty ridiculous. Um, I think that one's going to be great. And we haven't seen Yanez in action in quite some time. So um, I love that fight. I love both those guys. <clears throat> May the best man win. May the best man win. So um, speaking of best man winning, um, we will have a cheese choice coming up on the show tonight for uh, Pereira versus Arasanya. They have fought a few times, so Chidi had to actually really think about this one, and he made his choice, so we will get to that a little bit later on as well. Um, and um, there was a few things I wanted to get to you, uh, you guys' uh, opinion on um, and get your take on things, but, you know, I, I may as well uh, uh, get into it. I... I personally, with the WWE thing, uh, let's see, there's a couple people asking. Um, um, bu, bu, bu. Um, yes, next week, first I can answer this question, Joseph uh, Bellotti. Um, he says, do you know who you're working with next week for Holloway versus Allen? Yeah, it's going to be me, uh, Shuga, and Laura at the desk, and um, Megan, I believe, um, reporting, I believe. Um, so that's going to be in Kansas City. Um, yeah, so, um, okay, so do I think Andy H863, do I think the WWE UFC merger will be better for fighter pay, etc.? See, that's what I, I, I would have to believe it's just better for everything because it makes so much money, right? Like, I feel like, uh, hopefully a rising tide lifts all buoys or boats, which one is it? Rising tide lifts all boats, right? Right? Yeah, 
so everybody should get uh, you would I would I would I would hope that was the point I I will say I I think you know uh, well yeah yeah I think yeah I do you know I don't like I said I don't I know people love love the wrestling stuff so and I'm I'm here for it like I'm not mad at it I just don't I I I I've been to some I like a really long time ago so I, I've never been to you know, one of these big WWE shows. I'm sure it's a blast. Um, I'm not, don't, I'm not trying to hate on it at all. I just, I'm just me not knowing a lot about it and not necessarily being a fan myself doesn't mean I don't like it. You know what I mean? I'm just like neutral on it, I suppose. Um, but I know people love it and I know some people at work are fanatics about it. Uh, and so, um, yeah, some people are, are, are totally into it. So hopefully the money that is made from that, um, brings brings more money to the UFC and hopefully that that does get spread around to everybody um maybe there'd be some cool co-promotion weekends or something like that where you have a wrestling event on one night and the UFC on the next that would be pretty amazing um I, I would love that that would be <clears throat> that would be really really cool to have events like that um or on the same night you know what I mean on the same fight card you could have wrestling and MMA so that could be kind of cool I think there's a lot of possibilities and there's a lot that you could do. Um, I think the thing that's one thing that's a little bit, a little weird perhaps, is the idea that for those who don't already know a lot about MMA, that they might think it's fake. And that they might think that <clears throat> because wrestling is scripted, and we all know that, that that perception might bleed over into MMA. And I would hate for that because I don't want anybody to think that our fighters are anything less than authentic. Um, you know what I mean? So there's that. Um, and speaking of authenticity, uh, with that, actually, it is perfect timing for the man, uh, the myth, the legend. He does come to us, you know, initially from the favelas uh, of Brazil, uh, but now has made his way through New York and, and to our hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Mr. Renato Laranja. Hi. Mm, hi. Yeah, my to my adoring public. Can I just say? Yeah, what can you? Yeah, you can say. Go ahead. You're gonna give me a compliment. Really nice introductions. Yeah, you did. Hold on, let me let me make this as nice as your introduction, because the people deserve that one. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, Nobody, let them to enjoy. Nobody knows does a nice introduction for me. I'm all here, out here alone talking to what? the wind. Listen, sometimes it is that way. Um, yeah, it does. It's every Tuesday it bees that way for about well, 10 or 15 minutes. Well, you know, you made you bad. Now you can, you can die in there. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I'm wow. All right, hold on. Let me, let me get. Yeah. Is this your first show? Let me let the people to enjoy. I, now, because show? it's different, it's different um, settings on get out of there on the green home. Uh, Oh, where I, I get, that's true. Facts, that's where, true. I ain't trice everybody to came here. That's true. Thank you for that. Everybody Your pleasure. Jay Crockett, saying Tio, you Uncle Hanach is here. That's it's right. exciting. He came to us from Hags to Hitches. That's um, true. From Hags to Hitches. Luke Lopez saying loves the show. That's what's up. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. If I hear hags to hitches, all I think of is fucking uh, goddamn uh, good fellas. I can't. Some of those songs I can't. There's a couple oh songs God, that you can't right. divorce that from. Oh I also God. can't hear that. You're you remember? There's like a George. There's just there's a George Harrison song that happens when he's like looking for helicopters and shit like that. Uh, oh yeah. And um. Well, it's like, I, no, it's a Rolling Stones song. It's, it's No, no, there's about a thousand songs in that well, part, right, but there's yeah, a particular, right. there's a couple of Rolling Stones songs and in that. A, and there's, um, at the end of um, Layla, um, you know, of Eric course. Clapton. That's another fucking right. piece of music that can never be divorced from that That now. piano part is so iconic. That breakdown, yeah. yeah. And, and the montage of it. And when he's like, like, yeah, when oh. he's like, Jimmy was cutting ties to, to the Lufthansa heist. <laughs> Hey, His listen, door opens. even what's his name? Yeah, what's that, that guy's oh. fucking name? Cobrinha or whatever? Or Cal <laughs> the fuck is the guy's name? Cobrinha is a 
jujitsu guy. You no, know. you know the guy with the hair. Yeah, the one with the fro that looks like mine. Today. The fuck is his name out there? Yeah, yeah, not Jimmy two times. Jimmy two times. No, it's no, a. It wasn't him. It's like with a C. Oh, why can't I remember his name? Oh, even it's not cause. I love that guy. Um, but he remember his his wife uh, tried to he he got bought her a mink a stall or whatever and yeah, here. We said, Don't buy didn't I tell you didn't I tell you not to didn't I tell you fucking buy anything no no like, what about the other guy who's like I'm it's in my mother's name I love it's that car I love that car the car right yeah you. didn't I tell what are you fucking dumb didn't I tell you not to buy anything <laughs> so those who didn't don't know good fellas. We say it, it, it comes up, if not once a show, every 1.8, I mean two shows. Like it, it's, 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 I would say if we're speaking to each other, even just without being on the show, if we're speaking to each other for more than 40 minutes, it would come up. Like if we're it's, in conversation. It, it's one of the most important film of all trying me. It is, it's amazing how it, much I, how important it is to me, actually. It might be the most important film. <laughs> Apparently, it's more important than I knew. It's, it's, a, it, it's something else. I, I love that fucking movie. Well, I love that car. I mean, yeah, no, because nothing, every. It's perfect. That's why. It's perfect. There's no dead air. Like, there's no chance right. to go to the bathroom. Right. There's nothing. You have to watch every second of that one. Every second. And even though it's long, like, you're right. There's no point where there's no scene where I'm like, all right, get on with it. Like, it's like my Johnson is long, but you don't want to, you want every portion of that. You want every second of the one to enjoy that. Mm. You don't want to sh- <laughs> you don't want to shortchange yourself. <laughs> I settle down with a nice girl every night. I love Yeah, her. I settle down. I, I want to be with you. <laughs> what about, oh, oh man. So oh, I look, he's got say, a nice I head of hair. Say, I should say yeah. to folks. Um, tonight we're gonna uh, put the thing down, flip it, and reverse it a little bit. Uh, Brandon Royval is actually training right now. What? So Yuoko Hanach and I, we will preview UFC 287. Uh, I got B-roll for all those fights uh, on the main card there. So we got Izzy and Pereira. We got Gil. We How got dare he not ma- come height when ma- we say he should? Ma. You got ma. You got ma. That's a tough fight. Poor Hakara. Yeah. Dude. So um, we can talk about all that kind of stuff first, and then Brandon will join us um, after he's done at practice because he um, it's like sparring night, which I find Tuesday night is sparring night for a lot of guys. And what about girls? Girls, hard girls don't because... spar too. Girls can't spar. Uh, you know. What? Of course, girls. You're stuck in a patriarchy mentality. You say, "Oh, the boys always have to." You know, there's also half of the people is girl too. You know, right. and I, I like to recognize them as a martial arts and as professional athlete. Well, huh? well, you like to recognize them, all right? I recognize that one. Mm-hmm. Carbone, is that the guy? Carbone! Carbone. <laughs> oh, uh, Carbone. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, Carbone, I love Carbone. Right. Ninja jokes and Karen looking intoxicating like a fine wine per usual why thank you hanato looking like a mad dog 2020. why you why you we got mad dog we got raw dog on tonight Let if i get you, my hands we, on that guy who made the comment about him on the air and we're like Brandon, we're like raw dog <laughs> like, hey i like that name because he, he forced people to have to say it in professional settings oh it's like that you know? black beast yeah, Black Beast, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. In these one. times, man, you got to tread lightly. It's a tough one because you can feel white commentators. Like, even before they say it, they like, I, Black Beast. You know what I mean? Like, they, they you're putting them in the fucking uncomfortable position, huh? Or, or there's the one who just loves saying it, the Black Beast. Who says that? Who's the one who says love that? I don't know. I'm just saying somewhere. I'm sure there is. Well, I'm sure the female, there's probably a couple of female. I'm sure Sanko is probably like this, or that black beast. Oh, oh God. God. She probably loved that one. Uh, oh, God. Um, a lot of women, look, look, there's women who like all different types. Sure. Some, believe it or not, there's some women who, who bristle when they see, they feel intimidated when they see a man that's look pretty than them, you know? 
So some Chinese, they want to see a man to look like a beast. Mm. You know, they don't want to see him look like a, I don't know, what is that? What would be this here? Like what mythical creature? A unicorn? <laughs> like? Yeah, like a unicorn. Or no, I, you know who I am? I'm Pan. I have the gauch leg. And then I wait, play the pipes wait. and I drink it wine. I just huh? realized the little thing. No, I actually took a picture. No, wait, wait, wait. Hold that thought. Mm. I can find this. I took a picture mm. of a statue oh, in God. Paris uh, at the Louvre. Oh, not one of my statues. So I, I don't have one in Paris I yet. I am bougie AF. And um, I was fortunate enough to um, splurge. <laughs> And, and stay for several days in Paris after, um, you know, the UFC show. So I was at the Louvre and I saw uh, this statue and I was like, oh my God, it's Hinato. Oh, uh, is this and, the first time you're sharing this with me? Paul? No, I know. And so I have to wait. So wait, that was September of 2023, right? Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I know this is oh, makes for incredible visual radio here. Here, you keep talking. It's well, right now they though. can okay. imagine that I am a statue, <laughs> or that I met Madame yeah, Chusan. You, you were like a pan type Wax thing. Museum. I think it was, and I th I do believe that yes, there was like a flute of some sort or something involved. Yeah. Um, let's a see. Yeah, what, the skin yeah. flute. <laughs> um, you know, I'm also pan. You know, the he's in the car was cause bread, and I look like a whole witch. Oh gosh! I look like honey wheat. You you look like a stale stale. Uh, that's unbelievable. You know, people. You have to come up with a more believable because people is Here looking is. and it don't compute. This was this, yeah. This was you with the goat with the goat legs, right? Uh, oh, God, are you? Look at that one. Yeah. That's very becoming because I'm also the goat. Um. How about how's the schwanz on this fucking guy though? I don't know. I just like. Do they did legs. they draw a, 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 a schwanz and stuck on there? <laughs> it's there. I mean, uh, if I didn't there. saw that one, but I, I remember from here, that and I thought that that's who you would be. Cause like you always talk about having the goat legs. I think his schwanz need to be bigger, and then also need to have more of uh, the fur on there, and then it's gonna be. It's going to be more uh, correct. Well, to, you don't want that. Be. It's going to get banned in schools. People can't look at great art anymore. So, uh, They can look at my Schwanzenstück. Uh, you know what school? They can do it at night school, adult school. They can have that one. Night and school. also driving school. Uh -huh. You can look at a picture of my Schwanz, uh, of my uh, Schwanzenstück. Okay. I, why would why, why that doesn't make any sense because in driving school because it's gonna drive them wild uh -huh. <laughs> you should have said something about the stick here. the joke was that's bad. another part can you drive stick i can learn for him. yeah jay crockett it's supposed to be a family show what kind of family the the, the adam family the monster <laughs> If you're showing this to your oh, family, you got a lot Hattie, more problems. Hattie is fighting this weekend. See, that's what I said. Mm, I keep forgetting Hattie. who is on the show. I keep forgetting. That's Carayu. Michelle Hattie. has been on the Hattie. show, too. She's episode 44. We had a great time with her. She's adorable, uh, and we had a really good time with her. How was she? She, she was un, uh, undressing me with her eyes. She was, uh, oh, my goodness. She wanted to jump through when she saw me in that suit. She wanted to jump oh, through the right. screen. You, would, you were, like, in court? Never mind that. Maybe I was just, you know, uh, modeling or something like that. Okay. All right. Well, let's. Why don't we do this? Let's talk. Let's talk about the main event this weekend, because this is going to be. Wait, the uh, movie, the main event with uh, the, uh, Barbara Streisand and, and fucking and Ryan O'Neill. Oh God, are you the As main a event? And she's his manager or something. Oh, right? huh. We make love. The main event, boy. We, yeah. we know some random stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's called, it's, we culture. Okay. I'll give you culture. The champion. Yogurt. The champion here. Look at that. You know what scared the shit out of me? What? Uh, somebody, uh, uh, I saw that, that, that Arasanya was... Uh, was injured and he was out of the fight or whatever. What? But it was, it was a, a few. Joke? 
yeah but then i look but it's still up but it's from like april Fool, you know so yeah. I, I was expecting that kind of shit that day but it was new to me so i was like fuck yeah that was it, it said that chamayev was was the he placed match oh god and even chamayev like played into it he 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 put like a salute for the comment right 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 yeah well, and i it I fucked mean, me up first i had to investigate that one that would i mean be be believable mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah some of the april fool's jokes you're like <laughs> come on it's fine if it's april fool because i can just dismiss that one because of the date but Right. About three days later, I wasn't expecting that shit. And I was like, right. oh, God. Oh, yeah. But anyway, Pereira is dangerous. You know, everybody talks about how, how gigantic he is for the weight class. Um, People talk I about how a gigantic I am. Heavyweight, heavyweight. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I would never not watch. I don't care who wins this one. I would never not watch those two of them, them fight. I don't care if they fight eight times. I'm going to watch that <laughs> one because it's... It's like watching the, um, I don't know, it's like watching uh, De Niro and Pacino uh, in Heat or something like that. Right. It's like you're getting to see two of the finest that ever did it to, to, mm -hmm. to you know, what? I love that kind of stuff. Even if it's not as, even if it's a chess match and they not there's not as many connection or whatever like that. But it's just so interesting to watch. Oh, wow. It's so interesting I mean, to watch this. I I know, but until wasn't. you don't, you know. I mean, look, this happened a couple of times um, in their battles, you know. I got nothing against Pereira. I, you know, I like both these dudes. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I could watch these guys. Uh, yeah. Go. No matter who win that one, yeah. you know, it's just so exciting for me. I, I, I hope they never stop fighting the two <laughs> of these know, guys. Right? It's, it's so much fun to watch to me. Oh. Did you hear on on the same kind of um, uh, the same note? Did you hear about who Wonder Boy is fighting next? Uh, let me guess. Someone I never even considered for him to fight, but now that I see it, I'm like, ooh. Not Lawler. Oh no, 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 no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone who would be like, "What the fuck is this gonna be like?" Shavkat. No, like it's gonna be whirling dervish, the two of them. It's gonna be like watching a Tekken video game or whatever. I don't know, like Matt Brown or something. Oh no, no, you're on the Hong. Um, you're getting I called. Don't know. I don't know, young guy. I don't know. Uh, the fucking guy. Now I can't remember his name. The fucking guy who looked like he's doing like capoeira flips and shit. Um. Oh, oh gosh, yeah. Um, what's his face? Um. You begin um, with a P. Yeah, um, um, isn't it also Pareda? What am I? What am I? No, it's not. It's a, but it's no, close to that. It's like uh, I know, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his fucking name, but boy, the pretty. He's sort of like what's his face? Take it easy. And he has you're the about ponytail. to say he's pretty. I don't think so. He has the ponytail. Oh. Yeah, he looked like a character from Chucky or something like that. Right. You know? Yeah, it is Pareda. It is no. Um. Yeah, Michelle Pareda. There's not Alex Perry. The other one is Michelle Pereira. Yeah. It is. Is that? That's Michelle. Oh, God, are That's you Michelle? With the ponytail, like with the man He had bun. to learn how to fight because his name is you Michelle. God, <laughs> yeah, with the man bun. Mm-hmm. That guy, yeah. That, yeah. No, some people well, think he's hot. He's not my type. He's he's a good-looking guy. Boy, he's, he's in shape. Yeah. Listen, he's no, oh, he's no Uncle sure. Hanach, but... God, oh, What'd you say? I said he's obviously in shape. Well, yeah, some of these guys isn't in the best looking fucking shape in the world, you know? Yeah. Maybe. Look at a couple of these fucking guys. Yeah. So, well, I mean, so who do you think? I mean, do you have a, a, a are you leaning one way or the other? I mean, I, I want Izzy to win, but I mean, to say that I know who is going to win that fucking fight is like, I would be lying to you. I would be just making something up, you know? Right. I cannot tell you what's gonna happen that one, and, and anything can happen. With well, those you know, two, it could be a first, a thirty-second knock in the first round, thirty second. It could be the whole fight. It could be double knockout. It could be oh, who the fuck knows? Um, it could be anything, it, and on either side, I don't know. Yeah, it could be that. It could just be that. 
Pereira is the guy that just has his number, you know, that is just the kryptonite to Izzy, like that. No but Tanch, I mean, a problem that I think Izzy face in this, the, the problem is this for, for Izzy. Izzy has to fight the perfect fight. Pereira can fuck up. There's a lot more room for error. Simply because he can change, he having more power in his hand. Yeah. So that can erase some mistakes. Adesanya can make zero mistake, you know, yeah. and ha and have to get him accumulation of shit. Whereas Pajera can be getting fucked up the whole fight and then end the shit with one punch. It's harder for Easy to do that simply because the the size difference and arguably even with the without the size difference Pajeda m might just have that ungodly power in, in his hand that you can't really teach or is just god given poham from my god well the other factor too is that <clears throat> you know you'll see some things where you know is he should just shoot and wrestle and that's the way to you know victory and he should really go for that and I, you can't imagine that the guy who trains with Glover freaking Teixeira isn't also training on the ground. Like for sure, I mean, and to be like, fair, I guess we haven't really seen it a lot. I guess is why. Listen, to be no fair, way that somebody that is under Glover's tutelage isn't training on the ground. No, but just like Glover, I mean, Glover loved to play chop on the ground but he wasn't the kind of guy that likes to be playing from his back and guard. no but he certainly knew how to make his presence known once the fight got for there sure i mean of, of course of it. That's these what I'm guys saying. like yeah he's I'm a black belt you can't just say that taking him down will mean he won't no and also there. listen yeah. if easy's whole program was to try to work to check him down and then just you know, check him, check him down and, 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 and beat him up down there. I don't feel like he's that type of guy anyway, because if yeah. that's the kind of guy he was, I don't think he would have fought like, let's say, uh, uh, Jan Blagojevich or whatever the fuck, or a black African American bitch or whatever. Okay. Um, because I think Izzy truly is the kind of guy who want to see what he, he will fight somebody that can beat him. He he want to see, he want to see if he can beat the dragon. You know, he can slay the dragon. Which I'll, <laughs> there's not a lot of people out there like that. You know. Yeah, I think he wants to see. Most that. people want to beat someone they can beat. You know, or they yeah. know they can beat. You, you want know? an easy win. A lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. most people. You know, um, it's very few people that truly want to test themselves. You know. Yeah. You yeah. can see that. You know. Speaking of which, when you. When you see uh, basketball, when you play basketball out on the streets, okay, mm -hmm. the playground, whatever, most of the people there, uh, more than half the people will cheat, you know, like like the, the ball will go off them and they'll say it didn't and shit like right. that, you know, right. and there's, a, there's only a handful of guys who truly want to win, see if they can win, you know, like if, if, if for heel, I, I never understood that when people cheat in basketball. Because first of all, there's no money on the line, nothing like that. I I'm playing to see if I can beat these people for heel. I I, I don't want to win off of some bullshit. I, I don't I don't understand that. But it's funny. You you would think most people is like that. Even grown men is like they cheat in a meaningless game of basketball. You Dude, know? I played. You know, I used to be on a team uh, for tennis, like a ladies tennis league. Oh, ladies tennis. Chick cheating all the time and the thing is is you only i don't have, understand you only that to just rely on each other's honesty if a ball is out or not right and so it's yeah. all the way down in their end of the court they're losing and they're like oh that's out you're like really you know yeah, what, and what I, I do about it i can't do anything <sighs> about it and apparently it's like you need it that bad bitch. yeah take it and i understand I came here to just play a real game and to see if i could really win right but you apparently exactly. need to cheat and ladies Saturday it makes no tennis. it makes no sense it's like i don't get it but i understand yeah. it in pro sports it's like if i'm playing pro basketball i'm not gonna say it went off me because there's a lot at stake for these other guys and for stuff sure. like that i can't do that i'm not gonna fuck up the chain but if it's like a a fucking game of 
pick up basketball. Who the fuck cares? You know, like yeah, you know, it went out of you. That's it. Go go on to the next play. You know, right. make it back up the next time or something like that. Yeah. Well, apparently a lot you of know? people are not that um, that uh, honest. Hey. So anyway, that reminds me. Yeah. Um, then we should see what. Ah, uh, the man, the myth, the legend thinks. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Cheaty's Choice. Today, the festivities bearded dragon mascot will be choosing the UFC 287 main event between the champ. Oh, shit. I can't Rex check this. And the former champ, Israel Adesanya. What we do is we put Cheaty down in front of two piles of arugula, but we take the names. We randomize them here. Don't know which is which. Mix them up. Put one here. I got one go. here. We put our lizard down and he makes his choice. Okay. Here uh oh. Comes. Yeah. Uh -oh, right. What the fuck? He has to think about this a long time. Watch this. Oh shit. Watch this. I like that he's checking this serious. No, he took a really long time. Oh my goodness. Like fuck. A long time. Tim Porch. Okay. Chidi has made his choice. Boy, he really had to think about this one. And I understand. These two have fought each other a few times. Highly dramatic, highly dramatic. Chidi says that Alex Pereira will win again. But then he went for the other one as well. Oh no, folks. We will see what happens. It could be Pereira. It could be a draw. We shall see. We shall see. So the last time that happened, when he went for the other pile, was when he picked Edwards to win, but Uzman, he went to Uzman's pile. There was a point taken in that fight. Remember, we were like, if yeah. anything weird happens in this fight, it's because a cheat cheat he called it. So anyway, he picked it right, and there was something weird. So I don't know. I was a little bummed. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm rooting for Izzy. Look, I, I'm rooting like against... I nothing against Pereira, but I am rooting for Izzy. I, I, I'm rooting against Chidi this time. Uh, I don't care about his hacker. Please say it. On, you looked so a little cool. hurt. You looked a little hurt. I'm not going to lie. I was harsh. I was harsh. Yeah. He's mad because I called him a lizard. Jesus. He is a lizard, isn't he? Are you sure you haven't been cheating on there? Putting You're putting vinaigrette on there or something on no. one of the ones? And did you see when he went to the left, too? He thought about it a really long time. Like, I think it hurt Chidi, too, to, to think that, that it's going to be Pereira. I think he's an Izzy fan, if I'm honest. He's, I don't know. Maybe not, though. I think he's picked against Izzy in the past. He's Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so, as you had also mentioned, though... Um, uh, the um, Jorge Ma 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 It's gonna be tough. I mean, Masvidal. Let me tell you something. He's a great fighter. Such a good name. He's an all-time great. Bacara, you the way Gilbert Barnsey has been looking. Burns is of late is just i'm a little worried for your boy must be down okay i am too i'm not gonna lie he's a f and g but i feel like jorge, uh, jorge just doesn't have the momentum that gilbert has mm. right now and gilbert's just been facing the best of the best and uh yeah I, and you know not distracted with sight not to say that you know whatever whatever but like just last week, he was promoting a big boxing event and getting yeah. upset about an indictment. Whereas, you know, he might have should maybe be been a little bit more focused. On also, football. also something that that was a little concerning too was that he made a statement that if he lose this one, he's going to hit child. I don't know that that's the best mentality. That. For sure. I don't I don't know that that's the best mentality to come into a fight like that. You well, know? to be honest with you, I think it's the right decision. I understand yes. that, but again, I, I don't I think agree. I think that you got one guy who says that and another guy who thinks he's going to be a world champ, you know? Right. Agree. Um, it's not the mindset you want going. It's probably not the fight. mindset um and also when you have a guy that's probably making more money now 
with his promotions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He's probably on to the next thing mentally, you know, he's probably checked out, you know, I think. Yeah, but, he's, he... you know, he's also, I'll tell you one thing, though, he is tricky. And, you know, like the way he knocked out, um, who did he knock out that I was shocked? Was Chill? it, was it, yeah, the way he knocked out Chill, you know, was very sneaky. And sometimes, you know, he had those sneaky tricks up his sleeve. So I wouldn't put it past him to be able to win, but... I think he have to be, he definitely have to be an underdog in this one here. Yeah. Well, yeah, and the thing is, so if you really do think about it, to your point there, yeah, like, look at Gilbert here fighting like a lot lately. There's yeah. a lot of tape on him. There's a lot of footage. I mean, I mean, I guess you just kind of have to prepare for a juggle. I mean, Gilbert, fight. like he, you just got to prepare for everything. But yeah, I feel like you know, Masvidal could counter him with something and catch him. You know what I mean? And knock him. I mean, of out. course. Of course, but God, I, you, I mean, the way the, the way Duhino has been looking lately is very is is like beyond impressive. It's, it's like he might be looking better than ever now. Yep. You know, and um, scary. That's a scary person to face now. You know. It is. I'm curious how Jorge's takedown defense is uh, these days. I mean, Jorge's takedown defense has Easily always been good. fucking very good. You know, right. and he's so savvy and so crafty. Right. Um, and, and his jujitsu is underheaded and stuff like yeah. that, but he's a backyard dog, dude. Dohino is just a different animal, though. I know, but Dorino's killing it. I know, it seems like uh, all signs point toward Dorino, but you just never know. No, of course, you never know. I mean, I you can never say never in this game, but I'm just saying, you know, it's yeah. a it's a very tough fucking fight for Rick Havoc saying, yeah, that um, that Gary uh, Gilbert is always a scary and tank shape. Jorge's about to get smashed bad. Yeah, I mean, I'm I could see that happening. You know, what I mean, Little Seal saying Colby laid out the game plan perfectly for Burns to dominate. Yeah, but I don't even think he needs to even do that. I mean, I mean, Burns could keep it 100% on the feet and still win, you know? Yeah, he's got good power. He does have good power. He's nasty. And he's mm -hmm. he's du <laughs> durable, dohinable, you know? Durino. Yes, he is. He yeah. is. Well, that is going to be um, a heck of a fight. So that is the co-main event uh, on that one. Yeah. Um, and then there are uh, several other fights uh, on that one that are really good. I think the one that I'm most looking forward to is the return of Adrian Yanez. The only thing that sucks is that it's up against Rob Font. Yeah, that's and a hard one for like, me. I can't, I can't oh, hoot in that one. Is torn because this kid is the future. Oh, he I is know. a future champion. Uh, I 100% believe in this guy. And uh, in the, in fans. this one. I, I just go with made the best man win on this yep. one because, uh, you know, both of these guys is cool is so cool and yep. they ha have both been great guests on the show. Yep. You know, and I wish the best for both of them. So the only thing I can say is whoever's the better man that night, and I think that's the way it's true. I don't think either of them is so much better than the other one. I think whoever's night it is is gonna win. You know, mm -hmm. whoever. Sometimes it's unite, sometimes not unite. Boy, you know. Right, and it could be one of those things where you know some some ways you could frame it as a you know is it a changing of the guard type of thing? Is it old school, new school type of thing? Because you know certainly that's a storyline that I guarantee well, you will be floating that, out there. That would be if if Hob gets like shot out. You know, I. No matter what, I do not see that happen. Well, no, what I was going to say is conversely, it could be oh. a story of not yet, son. Let me, you know what I mean? Where, where Font big brothers him and he's like, hey, yeah, kid, you're good, but you're not yeah. here yet. You know what I mean? There's yeah. Options are, are, are I, I see think, it being a, a highly competitive fight. Oh, I think and it's going to be very competitive. I think it's going to be just like whoever, it, I mean, I think it's going to be like whoever digs down the deepest you know i think because, it's going to be one of those well we won't be hearing from either gentleman as have ugh. both been transported to the hospital i mean potential you know, i mean the if any if, potential yeah. is if any fight is like that because they both kind of in a way they both remind me of themselves yep. tough durable and very technical and also have the pohada in there and kind of like fighters fighters i mean these guys is is like uh 
Uh, oof. Neither of them is fun to fight. Win, lose, or draw, you're going to know you're in there with somebody. And for folks who don't know, just a couple of weeks ago, we had Rob Fonts, Coach Tyson Chowdier on the show. Tyson Chowdier. 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 For a wicked good coach. Wicked good conversation. He was so, funny. He was funny. He was great. So so go back and look at that one. Uh, so yeah, you have a little bit of homework, folks. I'm not going to lie because there's several <laughs> fighters this weekend uh, and next that sure. we've already had on the show. So you do have a, a homework assignments to, to go back and watch some older episodes. But the Tyson Chattier one is only like two shows ago. So um, yeah. Billy Q is fighting at UC Kansas City. <laughs> he was on with us last week. And the week before was Tyson Chattier. So... Just go check out the last couple. Um, but did, yeah, Tyson, did you see the clip that I posted, uh, the last one I just posted? About with Billy? Uh-huh. Oh, I think I, I did. I, I posted to one today where the end, the end is you being a fucking Jamaican witch. For her. I did see that. Yeah. And I put even your favorite music on there, voodoo mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, what does it mean if your nose is really itchy? Like, it doesn't mean somebody's thinking about it. It means you're lying. No, it means you're going to hell it means, for doing it means, Jamaican voodoo. I thought it people. meant somebody's thinking about you or whatever. Or it just means you have allergies or your fucking does, nose is I think itchy. It's allergy. I think it's my yeah. plant, my lily flowers over there. Well, you know, I, I don't know if you know this, but they're saying that that we in, this, uh, in the South Land, in the Southern California, yeah. is going to have like the worst allergy season ever because Ugh. we had the unprecedented hang season. Uh -huh. And what's happening is a lot of we having this crazy amount of blooming that we never super had. Bloom. Yeah, a super bloom. Um, and then because of that, just your allergy is going to be crazy off the well, chart. I feel it all day today, Mike. My nose has been running. I've just been sniffling. And yeah, I definitely feel it. Wow. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Check um, some fucking uh, nasal quarch. I don't want to take any. That's what I take. I take Look at your Uncle Hanach. Wait, no, ah. no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, um, no, mm. no, I smell nice. Mm. It smells like cool cucumber, mm -hmm. cool as a cucumber. Mm -hmm. Um, what's wrong with nasal quatch? I don't know. I just don't, or I left a drug D my nose or whatever. I'll take a, I do have like a. Oh, I take a little um, like over-the-counter allergy pill sometimes. Would you take a Allegra D? I guess it's something like that. It's like a Claritin. I think I take. I'm not Would you take even? No, I'm not taking. <laughs> D. I'm not taking Allegra D. I'm not taking any D. <clears throat> I'm not taking. Well, that's the problem. That's why you have allergy. <laughs> that... Oh, don't I know it, Donato? Don't get me started. That's why you have an allergy. <laughs> You've been away from the D so long. You have an allergy. You develop an allergy to that apparently, one. Apparently, no. Apparently, I've developed some sort of repulsive pheromone or something. Listen, what I'm gonna, gonna do? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna he introduce D to you. You know, um, uh, you know, like with the allergy treatments, they give you a, like a certain amount to inoculate you from that one. I'm gonna put just the chip so you can feel. You can have some of the ingredient in there. But without some of the stress and the pain, God, are you? I'm going to give that to you for free. Some people would be jumping onto the offer. Inoculated. Um, yeah, inoculated. I'm going to inoculate you. Um, pass. Listen, your mom is listening right now. She's like, that's not half bad idea for her. Why your mommy so attracted to me? How are you? It made me blush when I know I that she's watching. I don't know that she's ever actually stated that she is. <laughs> uh, I think, it, yeah, she's watching so she can get a bird's eye view of you uh, um, every time. Me, how are you? She she's seen you how many times? It's played out for her. Baby. Yeah, yeah, your baby. I'm her baby, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she spoiled me. She want to spoil me. She want to spoil her baby, kind of. She want oh. me to take me on an all-expense-paid Jamaican adventure. 
Okay, thank you for saying this. It actually brings what? something up that I wanted to ask you about, and I should say, folks, <laughs> Brandon Royval, our guest, is coming on in a little bit. He is at uh, his training right now. He has sparring tonight, and so he will be joining us um, a little bit later. So um, we will be talking fights uh, and getting into some other stuff before uh, Brandon gets on here with us. So uh, also, if you know, we always say if you guys have relationship questions and uh, different <laughs> things like that. Yeah, especially start- that. Or you even know. just things that stuck in your craw, you know, like, um, you know, or am I the a-hole, that kind of stuff. We got all kinds of, all those. Or stuff of like, uh, what was the guy on 60 Minute or whatever that used to have a do? problem? No, not that, but basically, um, Andy Hooney or whatever, who's oh, like, yeah. um, you know, yeah, on your side, yeah right? like, you know, come up with stuff that grind your gears or whatever, and you're right. gonna, we're gonna ha- help you with that one. True that, you know? true that. But so, okay, but basically. first. I'm going to see what's going on in the bath. I got to check my toilet to see if the cho- the drain is working, to see if that the, the, the water uh, is okay, working in sure there. Okay, make sure the microphone is not working at the same time. I'm going to, ch- well, you wanted to hear that. You I have a don't. kink. I, why would I bring it up if I want? Well, what That's about all the people? Psychology, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, because you're like, ooh, sure. he's, he's a heba- he, he's hebellious. He's going to want to 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 fight against that one. You're like a water splash. Um, but you know what? <laughs> some you you um, you kink shame me because some of the people in the comments, some of the people who the fans of the show might have a kink to what to listen to your uncle Hanach uh, check uh, a wee wee, and you we you, you pay for that then we should that's have a true. Change. True. You know I, mean? I want to see some donation. If you guys want to hear some thunderous pee pee coming down, you guys better better pay you chop down off of them. Yeah. Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. I know you guys are going to talk about me when I'm going for her. Are we? Oh, oh gosh. Ah. Ah. He's so limber. Oh, gee, all that sleeping on that waterbed has really done a, done a number for his back and for, oh, for his core muscles. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we will get into something that I, I, I heard from the radio, and um, I was pretty surprised that it was a problem. And then I was like, well, I guess, and I started to think to the extremes of how it could be a problem. Um, but it had to do with a specific kind of tourism over in Africa. And, uh, and it was a specific kind of tourism that, uh, the government had actually started to say no to, um, and get upset about. So, yeah. But, um, in the meantime, yeah, if you guys have any, um, any, um, (laughs) questions, am I, no, I am not, uh, working this weekend. So, but uh, yeah, Poirier is working. So uh, that will be cool. So I don't know. A lot of people are wondering if, you know, if he'll talk about um, having a fight or something like that. I don't know. Um, wait, what's going on? My chair. I always feel like I'm out of line. It's not in a straight line. Um, 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 ouch. Anyway. Um, okay. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Elmo says, your car broke down and I lost my job a month ago. Should I not? talk to women until I get them back. I mean, no, I would just say go ahead and still talk to them. Um, I mean, the fact that you think that you're, you can just, I, I, you always pick them up. It's always a guarantee. I guess that's point one. But yeah, why not? I mean, and just be honest about it. Um, if they say, what do you do for a living? You then say, I'm between jobs or whatever, or I used to do such and such. I just lost a gig. I mean, like, it's not going to take that long, really, for them to figure out that you actually don't have a job if you don't have a job and you actually start dating seriously. So I would say, no, he was asking, Elmo was asking, he lost his job and his car broke down. Should he not talk to women until he gets that, those situations sorted? And I'm saying, no, just be honest about it. Everybody takes Lyft and Uber now anyway. Listen, not having a car isn't that big a deal. The car thing, I mean, it's a problem when you, you the Lyft and Uber get expensive. But 
But so do car payments. Yeah, sure, sure. You should be able to. I mean, Grinch, you're gonna run into problems because, listen. To be fair, women can say that they don't care, that they're not like materialistic when it comes to the, you know, paying for sh the dinner and all that kind of dinner and drinks and stuff. I don't but I will tell you this from personal experience because I've I've did like research on this topic. And one of my biggest mistake was I, I got too big for my bridge and I was dating like a Swedish girl, you know, uh -huh. and in their country, they don't, um, they think it's funny. Like when I tried to pay, she was like, oh no, I can't, we, we go half or whatever, you know, like they, they do that, you know, like mm. it's not, it's not a foregone conclusion that, that it's the funny. guys, they, they go Dutch. It's funny. yeah. So it's not a foregone conclusion. It's like to and them. Why did the Dutch did the Dutch really originate splitting? I have no like... fucking uh quite um I have no idea, but I do know this that that it's not like uh they way more logical about stuff out there. They're like, why would you pay? We don't even you know like especially the beginning like why would you pay more than me? You know like they they have right. more equality in that sense. You know, so I got. I thought that that was genius. I was like, oh, God, are you? And then after that, I got used to that. Then I was, I fuck, I, I, I took a date with uh, just one of the, hmm, God, are you? You know, like just one of the best one, but American, you know? And just as an experiment, I was like, because I wasn't starving. Yeah. I was like, let me see what happened. Well, I, <laughs> I split the fucking deal on the date. The, the conniptions that this chick, she went, oh, I don't expect, I don't expect, no, I, yeah, sure, you know, and you could just tell her mojo, like if she had a heart on, it went. Yep. Oh, I would instantly be like bummed out if some guy asked me out and then said, we're splitting it. Like, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. so you're not getting it. it may make logical sense. It may be stupid Sorry. that guys have to pay. On the but first, if you ask me out, why should I pay half? You know, we don't know each other. Why the fuck should uh, you ask me out because you wanted to get to know how you know I'm the one who asked her? How, how you know I'm the one that asked her out? If she asked you out, then she should pay. Good luck. Um, but the she thing she asked is, you out and then said you should pay. That's, I mean, that's a little different now. It, 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 yeah. You got to think of it this way. If people don't know each other and they're going out, it's, it's kind of crazy that the guy should have. It, it don't make sense, especially in this day and age where it's like, uh, you know, we're trying to break down the classic horse shit I, or whatever. Yes, I don't know what to expect. If if I ever get a date, I don't I know what to expect. I don't know what to do. I don't know what the like. Uh, listen, current, like uh, I, I play into it. I play into it simply for selfish reasons. I don't agree with it, but I know that if I don't pay, it's gonna fuck me up for what I want. Okay? I know I will judge a guy differently if he asks me to pay. Exactly. Okay. So I, I I don't agree with it. I think it's stupid, uh, especially when we talk about. You know, things that I don't fight against. Equal pay for women, equal heights for women, all that kind of stuff. You know, but you want also the guys to pay? Go fuck yourself. But, but I'm, not, I'm not saying you can't come back from that or that that's like insane. Yeah, it's, it, it's not great. I'll tell you it's that. It's not it's great. A, yeah. Um, so especially, I'm not going to. I'm especially uh, sensitive to that right now after having listen, been through what I've been through. I'm, I'm not going to lie to the guy and say that, that women is going to want to fuck you after you don't pay for the dinner it's a shame it's a goddamn shame but it is the way it is boy you know um it is the fucking way it is You're now still a, man, still a man's world otherwise yeah we got just like thing. this we got one thing we can use well there's a couple stuffs i mean a woman could smack the shit out of me okay but if i smack her back it should make sense, right? That two people who is equal adults or whatever, that like one person smacked yeah, the shit out of. Can hurt them a lot more. Oh, okay. So a little guy should be able to smack a big man. Anyway, let's not do it down that road, please. Oh, uh, okay. 
but I'm just saying, we we're talking about equality and stuff like that, and what and and situation. Now I agree. It may be logical that if someone hits you, you hit them back. Yeah, here but my the, mom brings up don't, a good point. It don't matter the logic. The women do the women get the same pay as the men? No, that's the whole thing. We don't get the same pay. So give us everything equal. That's the whole point. If we're having equality there, that I can pay my tip, my half of the dinner bill, then can, pay me what you pay the men can, in my job because I guarantee effing to you, that's not what I'm getting. Guarantee you. Okay, and I, if I'm going on a date Thanks, with you, mom. if I'm going on a date with you, I don't got nothing to do with what anybody's paying you or not paying you. No, no, no. But, but I will tell you this. About, it's not I will tell you this. That's the whole I, point. It's not I will equal. tell you this. If you have a person... Is disingenuous if you have a person that wants, that fights for or wants, or complains about equal pay, but then is completely fine and dandy with the bullshit, archaic thing about men paying for everything. So I can't have, I can't want chivalry and be a career girl. So I have Chival to be either. So I can't. There, there's a difference I'm between a career woman. I there's a difference. I, I, can't, I can't expect a guy to hold the door open for me now. There's a difference that, that don't cost money. Okay, we're talking about money. It don't cost nothing to 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 pull out a lady's chair or to open her car door or something like that. But back to, do you think it's fair? I'm gonna ask you this question. Do you think it's fair that if a man, obviously this guy asked a question, would you ever or would a woman ever ask this question? Should I not date if I'm broke and don't have a car? No, but that's like a viable question for a guy to ask. But that's because he must date materialistic girls who think bullshit. Are you a materialistic girl? No, but I have my standards. <laughs> I know what you're saying, your point, but it's different because a girl, any girl can just walk out and get it anytime she wants, like we always say. So it's a different power structure when it comes to that part of the sexual dynamic. It's not the same power structure. So yes, the guy needs the currency of the job and the stuff. It's like a bird dancing with the flashiest feathers to, to woo okay. the girl. Like that's so, still part of Darwin. Like it I still said, happens. like I said, that's the reality of the situation, and he's going to have to live by that. Sure, is it is it fair? I don't believe so. I don't think it's fair, but it is the way it is, you know. And I'm telling him that. I'm telling him that. But yeah, it's but fucked I, up. Yeah, it don't make well, any okay, sense. So this, this actually leads into the conversation I want to have with you because I heard this on the radio today. And I was like, but how is that a problem? Uh, I mean, I, I, get, I get that it is. And um, I, get that, I get that it is. But so I'm listening to a podcast and mm -hmm. um, they were talking about, you know, um, some guys in this um, African town um, and how they you know a lot of them were didn't have a lot of money and you know only basically they were like well only the rich people this is perfect conversation uh only the rich people can find love here like every you know <laughs> like it you know if you don't have money you know you can't do anything you, you can't do anything here like we just we were so poor and we just you know we just can't have money so the only way out is for us to like meet somebody overseas and like uh, like fall in love and like oh like that there. okay you're talking about women yeah, no, these were yeah. men saying it, like that there's, there's, they can't find love at home. So they needed a woman from another country to like basically rescue them, like take them from Africa, right? And so okay, it okay. wasn't, yeah, it wasn't men, it wasn't okay. brides, okay. it was men. Fair enough, fair enough. It was men, it wasn't, wasn't, it wasn't bride, male order brides. And so, um, and so that's what I'm saying. So it apparently, like, you know, sexual tourism is a thing they were saying in these African countries where they were saying like, Women go over there basically to just f a lot of the dudes, and then it's well, the the guy in the podcast was saying like that the, at one point it became such a thing that you know one of the government I didn't you know maybe I don't know exactly what country uh, that the government you know stepped in or whatever, and I was like what what how. Like I get if it's traff you know trafficking and all that is very very different, and that's a mm -hmm. very 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 different problem but if it's just that like chicks plane fulls of chicks are coming over and going to bars and hooking up like why i guess i didn't understand why that was a problem like i guess i don't see what that's a problem either i mean 
I, you know what I think is the problem? I, I'll tell you what's the problem. I think it's the government player hating because <laughs> just like uh, prostitution in our country, it's like the government don't like women to be able to kind of monetize their pussy and not get a big wet bite of that one, you know? You might be right. Um, so if these guys is slanging dick and getting all these tracks free goodies, you they're like, wait a second, cara, yo, we need some of that money. You can't be right. I might be. I'm always high. God, I'm... it's got. I bet it is because I can't. Like, who's get? Who's the victim? Like I said, it's different from trafficking. The country is the victim. They hate into this and forced Listen, to do it. That's totally different. They're hating because clearly not every African or let's say whatever uh, Sudanese man, not every Sudanese man, is gonna be attracted or have a big, the biggest schwanz or gonna be in shape or whatever. So the certain guys who is like the creme de la creme, the biggest, strongest, biggest, dickiest ones is going to be getting all the money and the goodies. And all these other player haters is going to go, hey, that should be illegal. Carajo. How are you going to have these white women came in out here and subsidizing these fucking big I black just, uh, guys? I get you might be. It must be about taxation because I couldn't. I literally was like, how? Who's getting hurt? Yeah, taxation without schwantification. I thought it was pretty surprising. Um, it is surprising. Um, you know what I mean? Um, but apparently... You now, know, a, and by the way, by the way, I don't want it to seem myself, okay? Back to the dating stuff and the money and all that shit. Yeah. I don't got no fucking... You know what the thing? If I have money, if I'm doing well, mm -hmm. I'm happy to pay for my you know a girl i'm happy to pay for my male friends or whatever it's a pleasure to be able to do that for somebody i love being able to treat but guess what i've had times in my life here where i was on hard fucking chimes and some bad stuff have happened and where i was fucking broke mm -hmm. to take to take it off the table that i should be able to like date women or have sex or whatever until i got money it's like what are we talking about? Prostitution here? That's, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, no, dude, I said just go out. If they ask, just be honest. Like, but there's no way that you couldn't be at the dog park. Yeah, meet some cute girl and be like, yeah. Right now I'm between gigs. You know, whatever. I mean, give, I can, We can hang out, but it's going to be a lot of like going to the dog park. <laughs> I, I, I'll just put it to you this way. Whatever his name is, don't expect the same treatment that you would give to them, that the, to them, to you. Because it, so you're... I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be half. It's going to be, there's going to be an asterisk next to your name. True. You That's know, you, you're going to be, you're going to be behind the H bow. Doesn't mean you can't find some stuff. You might, you know, another thing he might have to explore that some of the chunkier women in the, in the, in, uh, out there, you know, How do you know it? well, he might have why, to explore why, even, why, why even a step your, chunkier. Why is that your immediate, like, Second class. The fact. It's not second class. It's like I'll tell you this. If he's a if he's a good looking guy that's in shapey, I'm just gonna say at best, okay? Like your uncle Hanach. But he's broke. He don't have a, a nickels to help together. I'll tell you what, he ain't gonna have a problem finding a woman who is maybe even attracted, but she's a little over the edge of the junkies. I she looked like a female Vinnie Muggle Ewing. She looked like he, he, huh? That girl. I she looked like Fred Barry. I would... Huh? With a little natural, like a little baby afro. Now that kind of girl is going to be happy to check you out and buy you a, P a PlayStation 5 or whatever is the latest one. <laughs> Go, baby. You, know? I'll you gotta, it. you gotta, you, I'll put the system on trial. <laughs> you gotta flip the script for her. Until you can, yeah. until you have some money on your pocket. Yeah, it is hard though. Um, but yeah, it's 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 hard. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's it's just. Uh, it's he says there's a woman that I work uh, that works at the market that's wanting me to ask her out that I like, but I can't because I have no car. No. Job. Is this the same guy or a different yeah. guy? Yeah, same guy. So Elmo, first of all, chimes is chop on, on on Sesame Street these days. It's hard on the boulevard <laughs> out here. Oh my god. He already lives in the trash can. He's already on Skid Row. He's more Oscar the Groucho instead of Elmo. Right. 
You're gonna be trying from uh, uh, Elmo to Oscar the Groucho. <sighs> but okay, so reporting on the scene. What he said. <laughs> You know Kermit I love Deepak. Kermit so much. And you know that was my favorite thing that he did. Like, I literally have two Kermits. That he part uh, in, of? In this, uh, but I need to get the, the, I need to get the little slicker, the little, the little uh, trench coat. I'm sure it they have that one. One of my favorite things from childhood. Yeah, he was like, the best. The biggest Muppet freak. But like him and his little ring. That's your kink. And his hat reporting sends me. I can't. He was I the just, best. I can't. I can't. That's Kermit D. Fog here. I can't even. Uh, but uh, we already talked about this. You, 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 you may have liked uh, Carmage, oh. but Miss Piggy is more your speed, cut out no. you. Um, but listen, okay. So Elmo, Elmo, what was his name? Elmo, Elmo Duran talking about he, the girl. He can tell that she wants him. That's hands to of steel. Her out. Of stone. Okay, so what was his exact comment? He said, "There's a girl at the market." And but I, I want to dissect this because she's we can help him. Need to ask her out. There's a woman that works at the market that's wanting me to Okay, so first of all, here's my first like, question. But I can't because I have no car, no job. Here's my, I got, I'm going to help this man. First question, Elmo. How the fuck you know she want to ask you out? I need to know that first. I'll wait. Okay, how does he, oh, what kind of signals is she sending? Either signals or him? some, some coworker. She, she told her, and yeah, told her he not to tell something. I, I need to know. What he knows, what evidence we have of that first, then we can, then we can talk okay, Turkey. Okay, because, okay, because you don't necessarily. It's a different ball game in, in, under different circumstances. Um, okay. Um, and we don't got fucking all day, uh, Elmo. I know. Wreak Havoc says Elmo's trolling. <laughs> uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah, Chico, they never lie. Right, uh, but he didn't write back about how what the signs are. So I guess that's it. The eyes, Chico. Well, he's saying that eyes. he gets the vi he gets the vibey. So the eyes, yeah, and the flirt. He said and okay. the eyes. So it's the eyes and the flirting. Okay, so Elmo, here's what I'm gonna suggest to you. If you guys have a good hip part, this is a person at work. No, he said at the market. The market. What? What so is maybe this? Maybe like uh, at the bodega. Maybe at the market. Maybe at this place he shops. Maybe it's Sprouts. That's maybe another thing sprouts. I want to know. One more stuff, Elmo. I don't think he means what the stock fucking market? market? I know he don't mean the stock market, but like the market. Who says uh, that? Maybe she works there. My God. Yeah, but do she do she work there? He said a ticket the market. Like, isn't that okay? That fuck it, true? fuck it. Okay, the market for her. I just don't say at the store. You know, at the supermarket. People at least. like, yeah. She asked, "Do you want paper?" Or <laughs> <laughs> he thought that she was asking if he want to do it hard. Uh -huh. Um, so, okay. So uh, what I would do, can I take a moment? Oh, can you answer? Can I take a moment to answer or to take a piss? To, well, I need a refill of my glass as well. Yeah. He fill your glass, do whatever, or AKA taking a dump in your, in, <laughs> in your toilet. We can't hear you no more anyway. Um, okay. So here's the thing, Elmo. Huh? Huh? What's your problem? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hello? Whatever. Anyway, um, Elmo, here's the stuff. I mean, the only thing I could think is you could make a joke. You in, in small talk and goofing around with her, wherever the fuck you see her at the market or wherever you see her, you can make a joke about, you know, like like as if he was a comedian, like making fun of your situation, like, or, or you could even say this. I, here's here's gangster the gangster move. Say like this. Listen, so and so. Listen, uh, Elvira, whatever is her name. Say, you know what's fucked up is I finally got up the fucking courage to ask you out, Poha. Because I know you're begging for me to ask you out. And I just fucking, but hide before I decide to do that. My fucking, I lose my fucking job and my car break down. So I guess I'll see you in, 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 a, in a year or, or in, a, in about five months or whatever. Now, if, that, if she get turned the fuck off by that and she go, ugh, and change up on you, it's almost like she's doing you a favor because she was a piece of shit anyway, as far as I'm concerned. 
But if she thinks it's funny and she says something like this, fuck that. We can do something that don't cost money or we can do Netflix and chill or we can go to the fucking park or, you know, I'll sit on your face uh, after work, whatever the fuck it is. Then you in there, you in business, poha. And then you don't, um, then she have a low expectation. And then when you do get a jobby and a car, you're going to surprise her and, and, and like check her out on the night on the town and, you know, spoil her a little bit. And then um, I think that's the, the high way to go. What do you think about that uh, out there? I mean, that's what your Uncle Hanach would do for her. Flax for you. You know, I don't, uh, I, I can't, I can't do that in good, it'd be, I was going to do it, but I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Karen Branch just came back and she's going to get you hot and bother. Not to mention her mom, who's already thinking about me checking her out to a to home chown buffet or sloop, soap plantation. What did you say about my mom? What'd you say about my mom? I, what did you say? I'll say I'll take your mom out to fucking soup plantation, okay? If she want me to buy dinner, oh. unlimited unlimited soup and breadstick, and also ambrosia salad. Another casualty of COVID. Uh. Soup plantation that killed that got killed during COVID. Well, I'll check out your golden carayu. Golden corral. Oh, uh, I'll God. also check her to um hometown buffet hometown buffet there's a golden corral commercial out that's so silly right now like you know when they tried i don't know i didn't know what you're talking about didn't, oh didn't don't tell me i'm gonna say what it is right now because it drives me crazy is the it the one, one where, where the, the mom is trying to like and the kids are all at the two they're all on their phones and they're all like doing this and they're doing this and they're texting what a stretch not eating and it's a stretch says something like Oh my God. Well, you guys are going to miss this, you know, popcorn shrimp. And they're like, no, she oh. goes hashtag, hashtag butterfly shrimp or oh, whatever. Yeah, and the shrimp. one's like, <gasps> butterfly shrimpy, butterfly those hungry, shrimp. starving ass bitches. And they all put their TikTok down and go sprinting for the, for the buffet. It is the worst. It's cringe worthy. It's so overdone. Oh yeah. Is somebody somebody thought that was genius in the marketing department? Some boomer. Well, who goes to OK Corral? Boomers. So some boomer yeah. thought that that was tapping into the zeitgeist. Well, I hold that commercial, by the way. Thanks. I will say this, wow. and I'm 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 a little bit ashamed that I got sucked into watching them. Mm. But there are some people on TikTok, you know, that uh, are are kind of funny, and there is like when people like, you know. The way different generations like answer the door or like the way different generations like go to work on Monday and, you know, they'll dress up as a boomer, or a Gen X or a millennial and a, and a mm. what is it, Gen Z or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit, sometimes those are, are a little bit funny where I'm like, OK, well, yeah, there, there's no lies detected there. There's a hero knee slapper. I didn't say they were all good. I'm glad you. I'm glad you shared that with the audience. Now they can laugh. True, God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Well, I I fixed his problem, by the way, Elmo. Okay. Oh, good. Great. Sh she's sitting on his face as we speak for her. Damn. What? What a way to go. She who he didn't even have a specific woman. So. How you know it was even a woman, God? It could be a man in this day and age, or, and shame on you for assuming that is one. True that. Marshall Mixed Art. What's the best fast food French fry? Hey, listen, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I haven't ate at a McDonald for, it could be over 10 years. I don't, I don't even know. I mean, uh, nothing. Maybe more than 10 years. But when them French fries come out hot and fresh over there, it's hard to beat that one. I'm not going to lie. I had uh, the Carl's Jr. Uh, makes the uh, Beyond Burgers. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I had one of those the other day with fries. And oh, I've done one. Okay. I used to think Five Guys fries were the best. I never been um, to that store. I mean, to that restaurant. But I haven't been to one, and I've only been there like once, literally, and it was probably yeah. at least eight years ago or something. Like I don't know. You know, like I don't remember. So listen, Fat Burger, the skinny fries, as Fat Burger, if they come out fresh, not too shabby, got you? Well, I tell you what, we can ask our guest what his opinion is because he is here now. Oh, uh, too much about food. Because he's got to be cutting weight. Oh, I'm going to kill this guy with right that. Here. Oh, boy. But he's hey. currently ranked number four in the UFC flyweight division. Give it up for uh. Brandon Royval. Oh. What's up, y'all? Look at Brandon Royval. Five guy fries. You said that's a five guy fries? Five guy fries. Oh, my God. I could just die for that right now. They're good, right? Yeah. So uh, what other stuff could you die for right now? I think French fries is like my top of the list, but uh, green chili and oh man, I don't even know. Yeah, some chips and salsa. That sounds bomb. Just oh. chips and salsa. Chips and salsa is like my favorite thing to eat. I no shit. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Just, that's like a chain. Uh, uh, you know, that's kind of chain for all the greasy, cheesy shit you could <laughs> possibly say. God, are you? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, uh, normally chips is also comes along with like Mexican food and shit, but uh, right. Yeah, no shit, no shit, poha. We, we, <laughs> no, we thought it was at the sushi restaurant, caught on you. Wait, <laughs> now Brandon Hoyval, I I know that's not a classic Mexican last name, but caught on you, they have to be some Mexican somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm like a Native American, but yeah, Mexican for the most part, like Native American Spanish, which is virtually Mexican. Oh. So yeah, yeah, I don't really oh, know no too shit. Much about my ancestors, but. Uh, yeah, I'm mostly native and Spaniard. Like no Ponce shit. De Leon. He's yeah. traceable to Ponce de Leon. Yeah. Well, no, Quar he, more, more like Quarchaz. Right? He's like a Quarchaz, Nike Quarchaz. Yeah, 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 was exactly. Ponce de Leon Portuguese? Uh, that's my Jalan, Paul, huh? Anyway. Well, um, you're here now. It's funny that you said green chili. That's a Colorado thing. I know that, too. Yeah, yeah, it's a super Colorado thing, but green chili goes on everything, man. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's one of the things that I'm missing out on uh, down in Colorado, but it's like my addiction for sure. Now, are you 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 already started you you your diet and stuff like that? You can't eat nothing. Yeah, I, I could eat like the bare minimum of things. Like I'm weighing out my food at this point in time. Yeah, so I'm getting. I could tell. I could tell by the way you went. Like you had to get some saliva. You went. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I'm eating the bare minimum. God, I. Yeah, I know, man. It's a struggle. Let me ask you something. Speaking of which, I feel like, okay, if if you could wave a magic wand right, right now, okay? Because you you uh how much weight you cut? Um like water weight, like six pounds, but totally like twenty pounds, fifteen pounds. Okay. Oh, okay. If you could if you could wave a magic wand and have none of your opponents ever cut weight and everybody just agree. Like you, you, you have to just weigh what you weigh the day of the fight. Like if you are, if you are one thirty-five, you just gotta, you, you just weigh fucking one thirty-five, and that's it. No bullshit of of cutting. If everybody stopped cutting weight, would you feel better about that, or would you still want to do that one? Um, I feel like I'm so used to the process of cutting weight that it's like it's kind of like a routine at this point. It's like I know how to make myself miserable and hate it. But mm -hmm. uh, that being said, is yeah, no, for sure, I feel like. Uh, if I didn't have to diet or do this bullshit, like it would be great. But I would probably it feel like one forty five. So it feel like a, the yeah. needless suffering. It feel like um, it feel like even as the fans, we get gypped out of the healthiest version of our yeah, fighter. People just fought at their natural weight. Like imagine if you was watching haste horses or you was betting on haste horses, okay? And you go, no, 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 don't feed that one for the leading up to the haste to the to the Preakness sweepstakes or whatever yeah. they call that shit. To the Derby. Kanchaki Derby, let's feed them nothing but I, one ice cube every seven hours or whatever like that. I will go fuck that. I want my horse to be in sh to to be fed mm -hmm. and to feel good. You know, Karayu. Yeah, and especially in a sport where you're just taking on so much damage and getting hit, it's it's weird to think that we almost kill ourselves 24 hours before. Yeah. So it, it uh, is I, kind of crazy to think about, and like also just like. <clears throat> how much numerous hazards have happened and how many people have been hurt and harmed because of this. But yeah. it's like, uh, yeah, 
I, I don't really see anything changing necessarily because it's like even when it's like they're going to fight 145, you know someone's going to like cut down to that or whatever. Well, I, I think the only way you could do it is like a, like certain tournaments, jiu-jitsu tournament where you just same day weigh in, you know? Right. I mean, that's the only way you could do it. Yeah, yeah, weigh in right before you walk out. Because you would be insane to, to try to cut like the same day, you know? Right. Yeah, and then compete right afterwards. Yeah, yeah no, that would be brutal. Yeah, so I think that would be the only way to cut that because I would love that if if it because who gives a shit? Everybody's the same weight anyway. Like you fighting guys because everybody cut weight. You fighting guys that like what do you normally weigh? Walk around one forty five. Okay, you walk around one forty five. Yep. Give a check. Most of the guys you fighting is walking around at one forty five too. Yeah, yeah, probably one so, forty five ish. Yeah. So basically, you guys wait. You fighting another one forty five, huh? Yeah. It's so tough. just go like this don't cut weight buddy you know what i mean like let's just fight each other at full strength and then me everybody just go up a weight class. you know what i'm saying like the Meanwhile, fat boys Max Holloway is actually a welterweight yeah yeah but just but then it won't be bad because whoever's the ones you're just gonna go up and up you <laughs> right. know i don't want to see people deplete themselves right of but green chili some people and, think and chips and sauce <laughs> yeah but some people i will say like the um i get that and i i agree that like it'd be you know maybe we're not seeing people at their best all the time but i do know some people too like the idea that cutting weight turns on the fight in them it turns on the dog but, hey, that's what prepares them turn it on turn it on in the fucking cave fuck all that bullshit. <laughs> having to kill themselves over that no thank you uh and and you know what another even more important some of these girls that have some of the nice physique and some of the biggest booty cheeks hey. in the wings oh god are you it's like look like a long back <laughs> i want to see some cheeks on there and i'm being deprived i'm paying 69 79.99 for that they get shit. It back for saturday night yeah but yeah let's just you ever seen michelle water sound when she's not in the training camps oh god are you <laughs> those cheeks is on oh. <laughs> At any rate, Brandon, <clears throat> I don't want to get you in trouble. With, I know. Uh, I, was just just saying quiet. I just have to stay quiet when I do. Wait, that. coworker? Yeah. What? You met? He's married. You married? Uh, no, I'm not married. Well, then what are you Michelle talking about? about? Get in trouble? We are complimenting the cakes. <laughs> okay. She should be so lucky to to be with your uncle Hanach, the, the so a champion, sorry. huh? Michelle, accept my apology. Um, so big fight though, coming up, um, speaking of, uh, the featherweights, uh, and what weight class and all this stuff, but anyway, yeah, uh, you are a flyweight. You're the number four flyweight. You have a fight with, uh, Matosh, uh, uh, Nicolau, uh, coming up, um, on the Kansas city card. So that is next weekend and you're on a two fight win streak. So are you basically saying after you win, you're just going to call for a title shot? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm calling for the title shot. Uh, pretty much when I was like all the way at the top, like or like when I was like back in the rankings, for sure I'm calling for it now. Is uh, <laughs> it, would make, it, it would make all the sense in the world that to, that like I would get the next title shot because yeah. uh, um, Davis and Figueroa, Figueroa's going up. I already beat yeah. Kai Car France, and then after the Pantoja and Moreno go, I'm next in line anyway. So, um, right. in, in my head, I'm number two in the world as of now. Yeah. So, uh, and, and like if that's not unrealistic thinking too is because i've already, not at all i already beat the guy ahead of me and the guy that's number two ranking isn't even in the division anymore so it's mm -hmm. uh i don't see who else would get the title shot that being said is i know for a fact is the winner of this fight is going to be the backup for the title shot so or at least i know that uh that's been offered to me and that's been a part of the talks for me so i know that it, that if I win this, I have a big opportunity coming, and uh, especially if I go out there and make a statement, and uh, that's the goal, anyways. Is anytime I go out there and step in the cage, to go out there, make a statement. I can see that. Happen. I can see that. When I look at you, shit. When I look at your fights, mm -hmm. that's one thing you can say about you is you, you, you. you <laughs> no, yeah. but look, let's be honest. That's what we fucking watch. We don't watch fights. We we watch fights. Fights is um. It's controlled chaos, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. something that's supposed to be dangerous, something scary, because it's like, it, it, it's for the average person who don't fight or who never been in a fight, let's say, it's like they dip in their toe in what it feels like to be, because it's like a scary, uncontrolled situation, oh, God, I violence, you know, and you don't watch it to watch people pitter-patter and play fucking games and stuff like that. 
you watch it because you're like, oh, carajo, it's a fight, you know? And, and, and this is what is exciting. This is why you are the kind of guy that people want to watch, Poha. And it don't mean we want to see you get hurt, but it means it's bravery. You know, it's like this guy is willing to, to go out or, or he's willing to hisk, to check a hisk that other people won't check a hisk, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that, that's a little bit of part of it is I, I kind of, uh, I always thought fighting is like a perfect sport of like someone who's intelligent, someone who's not intelligent. And you're kind of <laughs> teetering the thought of like, okay, if I'm smart, I, I'm not going to go and take this risk. And uh, that's where you see a lot of these guys that are pitter pattering, not like calculating mm -hmm. everything. And it's like, then you get the total opposite of like guys who don't calculate anything and they just go swing for the fences. And I yeah. Think that, uh, I, I take a lot of calculated risks, but I do take a lot of risks. And uh, I just want to go home, man. I don't want to stay in there the whole entire time. I'm not trying to make uh, yeah. three minute fights. Like when I get in there, my first mission is to get the fuck out. And uh, I'll do do that by any means necessary. <laughs> yeah. But, God, but goddamn, I'm going to attack the whole entire time. And uh, th that's how I kind of feel. And I've had fights where I was like ashamed of or I knew I could have done more. And mm. I don't ever want that to happen again. I always want to give it my all and I want to know that at the end of the day I went out there and risked it all and uh no regrets you know and uh that's kind of it's let, led me into some trouble but it's also got me to be in a contender contender fight so we're here and uh we're here making risks and like I said I, I think I'm the yeah. most exciting flyweight in the division and uh I'll continue to prove that you know yeah well you kind of mean promo because yeah I mean it's hard not to it's hard not to agree with everything you just said yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I gotta work on my promo. I gotta work on my promos. They have me low on this card, and uh, I'm like, I'm basically fighting for a title contention on these prelims over here. I gotta start making statements somehow. <laughs> I'm fighting because it's like I'm being exciting during the fight. I do, it, it, I it's tough. It's tough for for the smaller guys. You know, it's like if you was if you was a a a a, a light heavyweight fighting this way oh my you'd God. be the you'd be one of the most famous guys in the world you know what i'm saying like um, that's the whole point why the flyweight division is so much fun for that reason like i always say it, like they're cats in a bag and i mean that as a full-on compliment like it never stops it's all action it's just go 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 yeah, yeah but and, but at the same time people have a tendency to take for granted those guys you know oh, which I is a shame are, because yeah. americans were like indoctrinated with big boxers and like you, you want know, the big galoosh and stuff Right. And so I feel like, you know, that's why like one FC and a lot of these uh, organizations do well around the world, you know, with lighter weight classes. But in the States, it's it's been a little bit of an uphill battle. Yeah. And I feel like uh, and, and I mean, this is maybe just my my opinion, but I've been in two. Um, two title contender fights before this. So pretty much my whole entire career has been a title contender fight. I've been at the mm -hmm. top of the division since the beginning and uh, with Brandon Moreno and Pantoja and both those fights were on the prelims. And it's like. We That's crazy. Job, we got to do a better job promoting because obviously these flyweights uh, aren't going to get aren't going to get uh, exposure anyways. Like we're not are like with the American thing that you're saying is like, but it, with not getting the best exposure, it's like we're almost determined to fail. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, in my opinion, I think I should be higher up in, on any card because the way I fight and my style and and all that. But also, it's like I'm number three, number two in the world, if you ask me. But I'm yeah. I'm ranked number four in the world or something like that. And it's like, that being said is like, yo, we got to get a little promoting going and uh, I should be at the top of some of these cards. Mm -hmm. Well, you're certainly positioning yourself on top of us right now. Look at how you put yourself is taller than us. Look at that. <laughs> I know, hey, yeah, this is a power. Un fucking believable card, are you? Um, no. Now, no, but, no, but you're, you're right. You're, no, but for you heel. are always putting on exciting fights and stuff like that, so. Listen, first of all, let's start with your nickname, okay? We need to we need to monetize this. We need to get everybody. Let's find out why did they call you hot dog for her? I got to know. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm kind of known in Denver in the Mile High City, you know. What oh, I'm for her. And, uh, got a lot You're of part of the Mile High Club. Yeah, 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 part of the Mile High Club. Uh, but like really one dude was like drunk in the crowd yelling raw dog him over and over again and uh, we weren't really sure if he was talking to me or not and then it kind of just switched to raw dog roy ball and then uh, <laughs> i don't know one day one day we decided to just use it and uh i like it did, yeah once we did it just it's like we, they said it on tv and i was like i'll never go away from this it was like yeah. may i suggest may i suggest that you lean into that and it don't mean you have to get into the sexual aspect people always people already gonna think that anyway but i feel like you need to come up with some merch, more merch or something 
God, are you? I mean, like even a caricature a, of you as like a like a some, some or something something like your own line of like uh, uh, thin condoms or something like that. Oh, like Lord, like I usually don't you know I don't like to use condom, but when I do, I use hot dog. You know, like yeah. like some something where people go this fucking kid that's the hot dog you know like right. we gotta get people saying the hot dog talking about the hot dog even more you know yeah or yeah, or it's like, like an actual like hot dog some snack <laughs> cup like some kind of food product listen like you're starving dog. i'll give you a hot i'll give you a dog I am <laughs> i'll give you a dog all right i can um, break it if you're starving you need a snack but Ninja, Ninja Choke saying raw dog coming for that. <gasps> you, wait, wait, chime out. What? You heard what he just said for? No, I missed it. He, he, he peed that one, or do I need to he peed for you? you no, know, no, say it again. I, I totally forgot the fuck I said. <laughs> she, she said, if you're hungry and you're looking for a snack, I can break you off a piece of the hot dog for her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did not. Hey, yeah, see, that's not a bad idea. We can start selling raw dog, raw dog hot dogs, raw dog merch, raw dog. I already right. thought about the whole condom idea. I thought that was great. And especially you, sure. you got, yeah, I'm telling you, your name, you have a great nickname. I mean, look, we already know that your fucking fighting is, 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 is hot fire. <laughs> Think about not sure having sex. But it's but not you fighting. That's the problem. Sex during camp. It's that? not the problem. That it's not your fighting. That's the problem. Your fighting is already sensational and exciting. So the problem is, is that you don't have the name put to your shit. You know what I mean? Like, how, why are people not? Because when you look up your highlight hill, it's nothing but excitement. So it don't make there's there's much 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 less exciting fighters out there that have a big fucking mouth and talk shit who have a way bigger name. You know, and it well, don't and yeah. I would say part of it, Brandon, is probably because you've been off for basically a year almost. It's eleven months. Okay, so, true. But let's say that, before maybe, then. Right. Some other people might even before have a that bit of momentum right now because you got to build yours back up again, right? Yeah, yeah. That that being said, is even when I was like popping and back, getting these fights back to back, is uh, I think I should have been doing more. And uh, there's a lot more marketing things, and that's why I try to stay like I, I want to have good call outs after my fights. I want to have a yeah. good direction on which to aim, and I always like kind of practice like, okay, what am I going to say after this? And uh, I should be incorporating my nickname into it. You're absolutely right. And just making because that marketing. Because there's a lot of shitty nicknames Fine. out there. And yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a good one. This is a good right. one. And I, but people hey, don't. Nikolai just got raw dogged. <laughs> people like saying it. Some dumb shit like that. You know? Listen, because put it, to, exactly. put it to you this way. If you was a WWE hustler, you better fucking believe the hot, whatever you, you name is in that shit is going to be part of the whole mentality of the whole character or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um it, it, and they know how to market these fucking guys you know um the you only know something done with it yeah the only thing i've kind of done with it is i walk out to shimmy shimmy ya uh by ODA well you i put that maybe i like it raw and i put that for you on my promo of you on on this shit, by too, the way yeah oh did you but i only got to put this much because they fucking copy hide or whatever yeah but but i put that on your shit. but i'm saying you you need to look merchandise that shit come out with some come out with some like gear you know uh come out with your, a limited edition of, of like hashies and fucking shirts and stuff and 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 make hot dog some shit you know i know huh? and especially like with trojan being a sponsor of the ufc is like you can mm -hmm. either either align yourself with them or compete against them and it's like oh my I god a, a trojan with oh my god mark. you should be like it, yo whoever you whoever's your manager whoever's your manager look into if you can if you can get some some cross promotion uh going on here that right yeah, straight up because straight up, uh i think even with what you're saying it's just like i normally raw dog it but Ooh, when, I use trojan, when i use trojan ultra things are, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah if i if i'm have to if i'm forced to use one kind of <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like the most <laughs> interesting Please man don't use the word forced when you're talking about sex <laughs> when I force a woman to have sex with me, I don't use a condoms. But if I don't want to get caught, hot dog condom thing. And then it's like, oh, God, no, no, I, there, I can't. There's so many things I want to say right now, but I, I'm trying to keep it together and be a lady. No, but I like that. I, I, I no, because oh, I, I think that's so great. Uh, yeah. you should totally do that. Yeah, I think Healy, that's the key because it's always you need a hook. You know, you need a hook when you're getting. <laughs> and some people, some people, you like them. Uh, because they have a big mouth and they're fun and flashy. Some people you hate 
you 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 watch because you can't fucking stand up fucking people. You, you know, you can think you don't even need to yeah. say it because I don't want you to get in trouble. But you can think of the handful of guys you you cannot fucking stand. You want to watch them fight because you hate their fucking guts. You want to see them get knocked out, you know. And then there's other people who just you know maybe there's they have a hook or whatever, and you like the hook. You know, maybe it's um it's a nice guy thing, like the guy uh you know Dustin Poirier. Even though aside from his fighting. You know that he donated to children and he helped children and stuff. And you might go, you know, I like that young man, Poha, or, or whatever. Yeah. Or it could be this guy have a great fucking nickname or whatever, you know, touchy feely. When, when I fucking, mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know much about him at first when I first heard of him. But I was like, I'm already a fan. Yeah, no, it's best, good. We should, to yeah, me, that's it's, like the best nickname I ever heard, touchy feely. It. You know, um, but I could definitely yeah. be doing a lot more, so I appreciate that insight. And like, I do, of course. Uh, and like, I hey, so you guys share a, uh, an opponent, you and um, and me and in Chanel, and you guys both oh. beat him, but you beat him differently. You submitted him, and uh, and and he knocked him out. Um, but do you have a um, like, do you have an idea of uh, obviously MMA math doesn't like work and everything, but uh, what are your expectations uh, in this one? My expectations is uh, a little bit of like what Hanato is saying is just like um, it, it's just controlled chaos. It, is yeah. I, I like I like bringing chaos and um, without 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 calmness there is no chaos, right? And I kind of like genuinely believe that if it's like if there's not some calmness, there there'll never be chaos. I can't have all chaos because then it's just my normal style of fighting. So I want to mix true. in I want to mix in the 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 both of it, you know, the 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 dualism of it. It's just Bring a little bit of calmness, and, and when when it's the right time, and he will live, he will give me openings and opportunities. Then unleash the chaos, and then be myself, and uh, be my chaotic self in there. And uh, I think once that happens, I can start taking over the fight. And uh, I, I think it, there's put, there'll be plenty of opportunities to do it. But um, yeah, I, I don't see. Uh, I, I see this playing as mainly like a striking fight, and that's where I want to take it for the most part. And uh, if I get taken down or I get a takedown or whatever happens is uh, I love jujitsu and I know he does too. So I would love to see where that plays out too. So mm. I'm, always, I'm always wanting to test out my black belt and uh, I know he's a foul black belt. So it'd be awesome to kind of just see where we're at there, you know? Yeah. What's your favorite, like uh, kind of position on the ground? Like, um... yeah, I like guard. I like being in guard for the most part. Like, yeah, yeah, I like being off my back. There's been times where I've been taken down in fights and I'm like, yep, here we are. And like, I can kind of just be myself and create, once again, create chaos, you know? It's yeah. Like, I'm good at creating chaos and I know no matter what's going to happen, I can recover my guard. And uh, once you know you can recover your guard in any situation versus pretty much any opponent, then uh, I don't really care what happens. I'll, I'll go off of my back, you know? You know who I see always look great on his back and, and, and have the same uh, mentality is that kid in Bellator, and now of course I'm gonna fucking uh, blank on his name, but he's like, um, he's like, uh, he's Brazilian, but he's he's uh, he's look Asian, you know, and not Machida. He 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 just lost to to MVP oh, from okay. from yeah, that I, leg kick. I, I don't know who it is, honestly. Boy, when you watch this fucking kid, every time he gets somebody in his guard, he does almost the same thing every fucking time. He's like the same armbar setup, but. He's just attacking that shit uh, the whole chimey, and he gets it all the all the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. against against good black belt jujitsu guys, true. And, and you see that like like guys that maybe go for the same kind of uh, moves. You just they have such a good series off of it, like an A to yeah. B to B. If this fails, I'm going here. If this fails, I'm going yeah. here. And they can kind of just string things back and forth, and maybe just eventually get the same moves over and over again. And like that's how I feel. Uh, MMA is kind of string. It's like really good MMA fighters, um, even in the striking positions. Like someone throws a cross at me, I flip it. I already know what I'm going to do in my head because I've made this move a million times. And it's like, I, I think that's the important part of like fighting too, is just separating your your mind. And it's like, I, now I'm just letting my body go to work right now. And uh, if you can do that, then you hit that flow state. And I, feel I was like, just going to say flow state for sure. Yeah, yeah. With, with a lot of these jujitsu guys, and especially, it's like, it, it seems like it flows way better. But it's hard to notice. It's like, like it's like people kind of when it comes to MMA or like striking. I mean, um, I think people put it to like athleticism. They're like, oh, look how quick his reflexes were, and it's like, no, that guy drilled that a million times. Someone throws a punch, he sees that slight twitch, and he already knows where he's going with it. He's slipping off to the side, throwing a punch here, yada yada yada. But then that comes with wrestling and all the above, like cage yeah. wrestling, chain wrestling. So it's like, 
I think that's been super important throughout my career is just kind of figuring out little series and like mm -hmm. uh, like the kid that you're talking about. I'm sure he has a sick series like that that goes from armbar to whatever he goes that he already knows. If this fails, the triangle is going to be open, or I'm going to go to the back. I'm yeah. Going to the plata, yeah. Whatever it is, you know well, what I'm saying. So. Plus, you're just getting more, you know, more cage time, more experience, more, you know, more fight IQ every single time. So it's like, and you're only in there with killers, like you said, like, you know, um, oh, I guess we lost Nuts. I think maybe he had a little technical difficulty. He'll pop back in. Um, the fact that you have had just all these very, very high level fights and, you know, title fights already and title eliminators and that kind of stuff, like, it's amazing, you know, you already um, have Not fought bad. such high level people. Uh, hey there. Um, and so it's not surprising like that you're gonna be better and better every time and get in that flow state. I'm curious what your opinion is. Like I feel that's kind of how Corey Sanhagen performed a couple weeks ago. Oof. Like he, everything he did, he just looked like he was like, you know, in the matrix, that whole thing of like, just everything else was in slow motion. Like he looked like he did what he wanted when he wanted. And just, like you said, sometimes controlled, sometimes brought the chaos, but knew, you know, when to put his foot on the gas and when to, when to not to. And I just thought that was such a great performance from him. Oh, yeah. He's one of my favorites to watch. I, I've yeah. been, uh, um, I'm, I grew up in Colorado. I, I live in Colorado. I grew up in Colorado, and our gyms are only, like, a few miles away from each other. So mm -hmm. I had the blessing of uh, watching Corey Sandhagen since he was an amateur and, uh, watching him progress but even when you're young you hear like all these stories about how good he was and uh, yeah. all the cool things that he's doing and you know you hear you hear it because the MMA community is small so it's like I've known about how good Corey Sandhagen was long before he was in like LFA and stuff it's like people uh -huh. like, this kid's good and I'm like all right cool so uh watching him perform and then watching him rise and all that stuff's been such an inspiration and just like kind of watching his mentality and all that stuff is like I've been able to steal from him and uh, been able to kind of steal some ideas and all this stuff and then bounce ideas off him because I see him uh, at all these little small small events and stuff too. And I've been on podcasts with him and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that's one of those people that you can see just has reps and reps and years of repping. And his oh, own he's exciting. Yeah. You, you can see the work. I mean, few people um, utilize the, the switching of stance mm -hmm. to their benefit like he does. I mean, that that uh you know cheeto is befuddled by that you know yeah. and we know we know how high level cheeto is but yeah the, the switching of the stance i mean because some people can switch the stance and it don't do the same stuff but he's so he's so seamless with it and he's so fucking fast and cagey man i mean yeah. boy it must be so frustrating to fight a guy like that yeah yeah he's like a he's like our mma's vasily lomachenko it's just his footwork his movement he fights uh he fights on people's shoulder all the time which means like like let's say it's my shoulder he's already off angle on that side at all times mm -hmm. once i twitch he's already back to the other side and he has those god are you i know what that mean well you think this is my first well, audio there's plenty, there's plenty of uh plenty people of people are not there. always speaking to the everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. here to oh okay people. poor her yeah, oh I already know. yeah but um he has those built-in responses where it's like it's it's so awesome to watch and uh yeah watching him progress throughout the years is uh, there's been times where I'm like, I don't even know how this kid could get better, but he's he's proving it. He's doing it. He's yeah, doing and it. In the best yeah. division in the world, probably. Like, I think yeah, I mean, the most skilled division. For a long time, I've thought he's a future champion. Um, it's just that he had a couple hiccups, you know. But I think that does only made him better, you know. Yeah, for sure. And it's like a, that with that TJ Dillashaw fight. And I know I'm pretty biased, but I thought he won it. And it's like, I I I, I I I I had him winning that too. To be honest. Yeah. I had him winning that true, and I had no, I didn't have a dog. Uh, maybe I did. I, I, I like the way he fights, so I probably was a little biased uh, on that one. But, um, but he also, who did he lose to? Who kind of like hassled the fuck out of him? Uh, maybe Peter Yan on that one. Yeah, he lost I think to so. Yan because he I beat think so. Song Yudong and he beat Mariah. I think so, and I think yeah, that. that the loss of Sterling in the I, UFC, I think. Yeah. I think that Yan. And Sterling probably made him better in a way that if he was wondering how he could get better, those guys made him better to the well, point where now I think it's like, uh, I he's going to be tough. Except for, except for Mahab almost look unbeatable. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, shit. When I was that dude fight, I was like, uh -oh. I was going to beat that Uh-oh. I thought I thought that true. I was like, this is not this is no good for anybody. 
<laughs> Nobody's gonna want that. You yeah, know? Except Yeah, except Sanhagen, I'm sure is like he seemed like the kind of guy who's such a nerd for MMA that he's like wants the challenge, like I can figure this out, you know, like a scientist or whatever. You know, yeah, man, his jiu-jitsu is good, man. Corey Sanhagen's a legit black belt, and I know he's getting better, and he's training with Ryan, uh, Ryan Hall, and it's like, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he's attacking legs. I'm sure he's getting ready. Yeah, uh, when this fight goes down to not only just uh, defend the takedown and maybe time the knees and stuff like that, but I think mainly he's like, I'm gonna be on my back a lot, and uh, I'm sure he's gonna train off his back a lot and yeah. Training with Ryan Hall on a consistent basis is the way to do it for sure. So, so, so something tell me though that Mahab is, is is he's seen leg locks before and stuff like that. And... Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. Aljo like beat a... Corey. Yeah, and that's another thing too. And it's Fast, like you got in like twenty a minute and twenty eight seconds or something. Yeah, yeah but let's wonder... remember, let's remember. I I I don't think that's the same Sanhagen. I think he came out two point oh Sanhagen after those. Agreed. I'm just saying it. it you know, whatever, whatever. I'm just saying that happened, but I agree. Like Corey, he said as much. He's like, no, those losses like drove me crazy. And I, I didn't want a weakness. Like the thing that was weak with me yeah. was wrestling and stuff. And you know, Jan, yeah, exposed that or whatever. He's like, I, I had to get better at that. I couldn't have that weakness. And now I want to just be a guy in the way he've, he's like, I want to just like jam their motherboard, like with too much information for them. To and process. that's exactly what the fuck he did. I mean, you can see it. Oh, yeah. frustrating. And it's like when you have that many movements and stuff like that, it is like it, it fatigues people because they're just like, "What yeah. is going on?" Yeah, he's going high, low, whatever it is. Oh, it, you're you're um, what is he was saying? Jam jamming the motherboard, but you're you're spiking up their nervous system and right. you spike them up the nervous system up. It, it's gonna be hard to one catch your breath and do all that stuff where it's just like you you affect people in a ton of ways. Is you give so many reads and all this stuff where it's like you're hard to figure out and he's hard to figure out anyways. But um. Yeah, in the middle of a fight, yeah, that's that's a, that's a hard thing to do, and that's how I feel about my opponent now. Is I'm gonna have to read him a little bit. I'm gonna have to get his timing down. And yeah. uh, uh, normally, I'm just like I'm gonna be quicker, faster, longer, and better than him. And it's like, like normally, that's just like I, I know I'm better than this person. It could work out. Where this guy, I'm like, I have to be a little strategic against him. And now that I'm at the championship level, it's like I gotta start thinking that way. And it's cool to see someone like Corey Sandhagen who goes and approaches it and like. Uh, not only is he a sick fighter and entertainer, but he's he's over here like calculating things and you know what I'm saying. So uh, I need to do a little bit of all that right now. And it was definitely an inspiration. It. And watching this kid fight for years, it's been nothing but inspiring. You know, I love it. Yeah, That's... when they come from your area, you 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 it gives you the idea like, hey, I could do this shit. You know, like sure. it, it almost gives you like a. Like, hey, wait a second. He, hey, I, I know where that guy lives. You know, like, yeah, he's no. not as mis mystical yeah, or whatever. Yeah, he's not as any more special than me. I can do yeah. this. Yeah. Well, plus, one, you know, one thing that we already know, like, uh, like you, you know, you do have that advantage of training at altitude and stuff. Um, are you, um, like, how, how, how do you feel about that part of the training, though? Like, the running and the grind. Like, what's your favorite part of camera? What part are you like, oh, is it that day to day? Because, like, you know, there's always one part that you just don't like. Sunday is my least favorite day, and I technically oh. don't have, like, a training day there. Like, it's not like I have, like, jujitsu or anything like that. I go to open mat on Sundays, but um, mm -hmm. it's not, like, a required thing, and I can leave whenever, you know? So, it's like, yeah. I don't have a regiment. But Sundays I do this hill sprints on these like big old stairs and I do two sides of them and it's like 45 minutes away from my house and then I have to drive all the way there and the whole entire time I'm driving I'm like, oh man, I wish this car would just go off the road. Just, <laughs> just go off a fucking cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I drive all far, like uh, at least like 45 minutes away from my house and the whole entire time I'm like, this is going to suck the oh. whole time. And, uh, yeah, so th that's like my least favorite thing is these. Uh, it's a huge hill, and I do ladders up them, and oh. it's like that. I know the first thirty minutes of it is gonna suck, and then it gets better because then when you're at the bottom of the ladders, it's not that bad. You know? Okay, I got a question for you. Every time the for me, even if I could complete the the this shit you're talking about, like let's say you took me to do it, and I I, I give everything I got, I fucking complete that one, and I want to die. Okay. <laughs> For me, even worse than that is about two days later, I feel like I can't walk. So here's my problem. How the fuck, what's your technique for then when you do have a work day, like a, a heavy training day, how do you get your legs to work? 
Yeah, that's so funny you said that. I, I've uh, screwed over a few of my training partners and brought them over up to the hill with me. And like, <laughs> What's this all about? And then the next week, uh, for the whole next Sparring week, day, like, two useless. days later. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm over here kicking Jonathan's leg over and over again, and they're all dead. But uh, for me, it's like I, I do it on a weekly basis. So, I mean, especially when I'm in I only do it when I'm in camp. I don't do it when I'm out of camp. So the first three weeks is miserable. The first oh. three weeks, I am feeling like that. My legs hurt, all that. So it, after three weeks of that shit, two, two days later after one of those, you're not feeling like concrete no more? Yeah, not even like the day after or anything. Yeah, no. No shit. Later. Yeah, yeah. So after, like, I build my legs up to it. But there's been times where, like, for the next three days, I'm useless. Like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything fast. My footwork is a minimal. Yeah, and like I said, I brought a few training partners in my. Uh, I brought my girl up there one time. Yeah, threw them over for a week, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. yeah, because you think you can do it. You think you can do it until you feel you might be like this ain't even as bad as I thought, yeah. and then. The next day, and then the day after that, you feel like you need to go to the hospital, Paul. And you can't, like, and you're literally, like, you're trying to sit down even just to, to like, you're just like, I just want to sit on the couch. Or get and, up from the bed yeah, or like, anything. Oh, my God. It's the craziest thing. Or, God forbid, you hot dog somebody. Have you ever had this where, you hot, where you're hot dogging, uh, dog, hot dog doggy style, and then you yeah. get a hamstring cramps? <laughs> have you ever did that i've had that and then i had to jump off the sideways off the fucking bed and straighten my leg out for her then you have to do the fire hydrant the, the dog oh, the, the dog pee where you're kicking your leg out to stretch it a little bit yeah you gotta stay remaining in position you know what i'm saying you so can do like that but the dog. <laughs> if if that fucking if that fucking cramp lock in you might not get it out for her yeah yeah that's why you gotta kick the leg back but you know you, you, you got a mission back. you got a mission in front of you you know this is true I've had to a barge. I've had to a barge. I mean, not after. Well, I did that too. But, <laughs> but even, but even before, you have to a barge mission. I hate to do that one, but, you know. <laughs> you can't go all in. Yeah, you gotta it do happens. the. You gotta do the fire hydrant dog peeing technique. You're kicking the leg back, but staying in position. You know? Yeah. Oh, but the fear of that when when you feel that cramp start kicking in and you're like, oh shit, for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. I'm gonna write a book and show these techniques. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that could be for the hot dog. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. raw dog. There's your reels. You need to just make these into reels or TikToks or whatever. And the then just like those are raw dog situations. Do you ever have one of these happen? Da -da 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 -da. Well, that's what yeah. you do. Now that's your tip for raw dog or whatever. And yeah. Like sponsored by Trojan. For sure. Sponsor our Trojan's Made not happen. a for me at all. <laughs> so go to oh, lifestyle. Dog. Go to your lifestyle. Dog. Yeah, D, sometimes D plan tip, B is plan tips. Plan B, yeah. Oh, plan B. Well, I'm already in negotiation with plan B. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. Maybe uh, maybe the Trojan. Or you got to hook up with Snoop. Why? What is Snoop doing? Snoop Dogg and Raw Dogg. Oh, maybe. oh, dog, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah dog. Like, um, maybe, maybe you could find some kind of, you know, something that he's doing. You could get in with Snoop Dogg. Something. Um. But plan B, yeah. I like to crush that one and put it in the drinks and stuff like that, just to uh, just preemptive. Even if I don't know we're gonna do anything, just in case. Not so. You know, somebody says, um, um, "Wait, what did I just see? I thought I saw something said about your about a game. I don't know." I, I Wait, don't did know. you? Are you frozen what? in there, Hoyval? No. No, him. Oh, is it, he? It, it, Oh, unless he, he yeah, unless wait. he's yeah, bored. Yeah, he was. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for a, for a yeah. second, it looked like you was just hilly, like, you was oh, like I this. Yeah, 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 I missed oh, it. I missed it. <laughs> Damn, not even And I was, like, I was like, like, like I was like, anything. boy, he don't look, he, 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 he's, he's getting bored with this <laughs> subject or whatever. He was like. <laughs> no, I got, I got booted out of here. <laughs> That's all, they're trying to shut me down. Trojan heard that we are, we're going oh, on no. plan B. Yeah, we're going to plan <laughs> B from that one. Yeah, yeah. They're like, That's their biggest competitor. Yeah, yeah. No, I was gonna ask, and I can't remember um, if I asked you this before when you were on with me and Angie. But are you a gamer as well? Like, what do you do in your downtime? Because I know you're still a young guy, and I feel like you do mostly though live and breathe your fight game. So I know you said you got a girl and stuff, but you don't have kids and stuff. So it's like I feel like it's. Oh, like, thank God, you don't got any kids. <laughs> no, hey. Oh, you're playing. Like you're you play no, like, God, I, you're playing with house money. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, make that let that should be the biggest 
you're gonna make 10 times more money even if you stay making no fucking barely any money you're gonna end up more hitched than all these guys who have all these fucking kids trust me for her you know Renato, he's young just let him live his life I am. I'm trying for him to live his life. That's the best way. If he ends up he with can... a baby, he ends up with a baby. You can live ten <laughs> life trends if you don't have any baby. He's Mexican. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm yeah. Kidding. Oh, I kid, I kid. Oh, caray. The Mexican like to do it hard and and they don't like it plan B, caray. I know. Well, they don't love the, the birth control if we're being talking Catholic. I mean. Hey, I don't love that one either for different reasons. <laughs> What's that? Oh, uh, wh <laughs> well. They don't like because it's against Je Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah, JC didn't yeah. want them using. God, yeah, but so I, I, I like don't believe in birth control. I like it. Um, I like to do it because we have more feeling. <laughs> because I'm <laughs> I'm concerned with feelings more. I care about like people's this? feelings. <laughs> hey, that's genuine, honestly. Good for you. Yeah, people think I'm heartless, but I care about feeling. I like more for me to have feelings. How can I feel something for her if I can't, if there's a something between no us, God, right? There's yeah, no I, I, there's some separate I, I want to connect. <laughs> well, it can't happen if there's these barriers between us. Yeah, why are we putting, why are we putting all these barrier up? For because her? you, you, you connect with too many people. <laughs> so. Connect, connect. Wow, well, Brandon, he, he he connects with a lot of ladies, if you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> well, there's that's no problem why there's that. a barrier, because maybe I don't want to connect with all those ladies that he also connects with, if you know what I'm saying. Well, but you I'm don't not have connecting to... with him at all. Don't get me wrong. There no. is nothing happening. You wish, you wish I connect. I don't with though. I don't want to. You want to make love? Though. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, sure you don't. I don't. But my question was, what do you do for fun? Uh, for the most part, I mean, I don't really have too much fun. I mean, my life's pretty <laughs> I, go, I go and watch movies and like go to comedy shows and stuff. That shit's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much. But like, FYI, like, FYI, that's what everybody fucking does anyway. Everybody who goes, oh well, I like to do that. At most, for the most part, what does everybody do? They fucking just watch movies or watch TV, <laughs> and go to work and shit like that. I mean, we are all living in a matrix where feeders to a to an ai that's living off us as energy cells all we do is sit and watch tv I well know. i mean I to be like, honest i feel like my life should be exciting i'm like oh i'm the ufc i don't necessarily have to have a job or anything i'm like listen oh, this, is, this is what i like to do i like to just be at home i like to chill and yeah don't feel bad i mean i mean it, it, think about the most hitchiest athletes in the world okay like let's think about like lebron james or something like that okay i mean what do you think he's doing? He, 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 you know, he's going out to live no, music shows chilling. every night. The fucking guy goes and he works out. He goes and competes. He goes have dinner with his family. He goes the fuck to bed. You know, he watch a movie on TV, whatever. Yep. Don't feel it's, bad. Nobody's having all this exciting. What the fuck he's supposed to do? Cirque du Soleil or something? You know? I didn't <laughs> say that. I'm saying, yeah. It's just, it's, yeah, <laughs> chilling at home, watching movies. That's what I'm saying. I just thought maybe he's a gamer. I thought maybe that's, you know, if he was into games and stuff. Because well, I finally play, got a PS5. You want to play games with him? And I don't know what games. I only have a couple few games. And maybe so he's not I into games. Get, I need to get yeah. recommendations because I Maybe he just want a hot dog. Maybe he don't want you <laughs> to play games. With, that's the problem with me and you. You're playing too much games. Oh, that's it. You know it. what I'm saying? Yeah, you're playing games, God, are you? Oh, my God. You really need something, you know? Yeah, raw dog is pretty much my only activity uh -huh. outside of fighting. That's your only vice. That's the that's one of the most fun activity uh, out there. It is. I'm not. Saying I like that hobby. One. That's. Li I mean, the the <laughs> fact that you're so dedicated to your fight game is why you do so well. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm dedicated. Also, to my craft. <laughs> I, I'm dedicated to hot dog. That's my craft for her. Oh my God. Yeah, for sure. I also feed to them a craft beer, kind of, <laughs> and a craft hoofies. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah, that's the tab. Yeah, that or craft uh, uh, fucking plan B or whatever. Don't. I go like this. Oh, here, here, here. Hmm. Sprinkle a little. Thing. This one is is, is sustainably sourced. <laughs> so it goes roofie then plan B. Is that is that your specialty right there? You can do it that way too. But sometimes I put extra plan B. I gotta put a, 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 before and after, kind of, you know, just to make Where, sure. Where'd you meet your girl, Brandon? Um, Casa Casa Benita. <laughs> Casa Benita, yeah, pretty much, honestly, more or less. <laughs> she's gonna kill me from a distance. Oh, she's here? 
Yeah, she just walked in. <laughs> hey, girl. Me mugging me. She, she's heard this last part of this conversation. and uh, You better keep that plan B on hand for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I told her. She already knows. Tell her plan. I'm sorry. Plan B is ah. plan A around here. <laughs> uh, I like that. Hey, I like the hang of that. <laughs> oh, you have a black girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> More or less, half. Pretty much. What are you, like 25%? 15%? She's Puerto Rican. Oh, can I? So is Roberto Clemente. Oh, nice. yeah, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh my so gosh. I deal well, with nice. a little craziness here and there from the Puerto Rican well, side. <laughs> tell her we're almost done with you. She can have you back in a minute. <laughs> I will, for sure. <laughs> what does she prefer? I bet she prefer hot, hot doggy. Hanato, that's personal. <laughs> Please don't answer that. Brandon, don't answer that. Yeah, of course she prefer that one. She don't, don't want any barriers that. either. Don't answer that. <laughs> Real love. Which How can you? I know that. That's so uh, personal. So <laughs> what? This, he's a person, and so am I. Yeah, yeah. Huh? She said. It, she he, said it's passion. Yeah, passion. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. I'm passionate about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like your passion for true love. You know what I'm saying? And I understand that. <laughs> and then if if it happens then it's not your problem anymore Caron. yeah yeah I, mean, I i chose the right one you know for sure and i know that she'll be a great single mom <laughs> you know what that's what it boiled down to uh yeah, yeah. brandon yeah, honestly, that's what it boiled like, down to you gotta be you gotta be sure about your choices and if you're like if you're not gonna wear a condom you gotta be sure about the girl and, um, for sure, sure she'll you, be successful. exactly she, she's a strong. Uh oh, did he froze or is that just me? No. Fuck, he's frozen on mine. Oh no, is he frozen again? Shoot. Unless he's going like this. No, he's frozen again. Maybe he'll come back in. That's his woman beating his fucking ass. He's beating no, his monkey no, ass. No, no. But we do. He, remember, he's in. A, he's ahead of us. It's getting late where he is too. So we. No, don't mind that. Look how much energy and excitement he have. He. I know, but he don't look like he's heading for bed. It's after nine. We've been. He's not heading for bed yet. It's. It, we've been on a couple hours. <laughs> hey. Never mind. I keep getting booted out of this thing. That's your girlfriend hating on you. <laughs> she don't want you to get any ideas for her. She just pulled out the Wi-Fi right there. Huh? She pulled the card. Um, <laughs> what the fuck I was saying? Oh no, but we was just, what you're saying is true. It's like she's she's a strong, independent woman, you know. And if she get pregnant, she know how to handle that one by herself. To the side of his head. Yeah. Go back to the fight. <laughs> oh yeah, the fight. Well. This can be the biggest fight of your life sometime is, is child support. But God forbid, <laughs> God forbid that ever to befall you. That's true. Custody battles a, a bigger fight than Mateus Nikolai, that's for sure. Well, yeah, no, custody is easy. You give them, you, you sign away the custody. You let the girl have it. I would you say, can have yeah, that I, one. If, if I were you, I would, I would focus on you, though. Yeah, don't have any kids for a while. Don't, if you know, like... Yeah, you're single. Like what you know? Yeah, like live, enjoy the dream of being a fighter. Like it's, it takes so much focus. You know what I mean? Like you gotta yeah. like chase your dreams, man. Don't 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 get sidetracked. I know. I, I yeah. couldn't believe we just, we just got a dog, and I can't believe how much uh, time he takes. Dang, they get yeah, he does. I think that getting a doggy is a great cure for people who get baby fever. Like yes. get the fucking doggy first and watch watch. You know. You'll see, you'll see, you know, a, a kid is 10,000 times harder. You're ready for that. that responsibility, yeah. You know? What kind of dog did you get? He got uh, the kind that, that he's out of here. I'm not touching anything, so it's just, I don't know what's happening. Maybe I think you saw it. that me and him was commiserating and, and, and bonding about plan B, about no children, about, about... Hey, how about when he comes back, we just say thank you and let him go because it is getting late there anyway. If he can't, if he does come back, maybe his woman can't keep her hands off him for her. No, but I feel bad because then it starts to get less fun when you have to keep trying. Do to you think that's what's happening? Like she, she just threw the stuffs off the table like that and started making out, tearing his clothes off for her. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know why I keep getting kicked out of this. Okay, well we're gonna let you. We're gonna let you go anyway, okay, so you can, you. so you can, uh, you know, change to your light skinned uh, girlfriend over there. It's later where he is too. It's the last week, full week of like camp, camp, you know. So I gotta make sure that you get your rest and everything. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, so what? folks, he's on the UFC Kansas City card. Um, and yeah, this is basically number number four, a title eliminator. I know you're going out there to make a statement, yeah? Yeah, yeah, and that's what I have to do is just make sure there's no doubt in anybody's head where I belong. And that's, uh, yeah. that's the title picture for sure. So uh, that's that's the mission, that's the goal, and that's what we're going to make happen. Yeah. But for right now, he's going to have camp with his light-skinned girlfriend, yeah, yeah. and they're going to host they're going to host a dog for her over the fire. I can't wait. <laughs> Enjoy <laughs> it. I, I appreciate y'all. Right, I'm glad okay. you can make it. Thank you so much for joining us. Joining us. I'll see you in Kansas City. Tell your lady we said ciao, Poha. Thanks for, for, for lending lending you to us, Karoli. <laughs> yes. See you later. Right, thank you. Bye. <laughs> what a good kid. He's, He's a, a nice kid. young man. He is yeah, a nice young man. He have a good attitude. I like this kid. He does. He does. And yeah, he should just focus on the fights. Like, focus on himself. Yeah. Like, but I, I hate... It's cool to have a girlfriend yeah. or whatever. But I'm saying, like, yeah, don't have kids young and all this crap. Like, just be a fighter. No. No, there's time, time to have a kid if you want that one. But it's true. Get a doggy. That's a good project I'll first. A doggy. I love doggos. Too. Oh, I fucking love a doggy. I um, don't. But uh, it is a shame. It, boxers always dealt with this true. Not dog boxer, but the uh, <laughs> boxers. When you got the smaller guys, they have to fucking, I mean, the amount of fame a heavyweight can get for the same talent level or way less a talent level is crazy. I, think about I don't know what it is. I think, I think maybe subconsciously, like people are stupid, you know, like, they look at a smaller guy like that and they think, well, I could beat this guy. Yes. He's smaller than me. So I'm, it's not that exciting. Little did they know that he would beat the, 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 the whatever out of the, uh, the char off of these guys. And then, and, but they see like a big, you know, uh, 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 Nganu or whoever it is. And they think, oh, God, uh, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like big cheeries, you know? It's like, oh, wow, you know? And you get, you know, mesmerized by the, just the, the sheer size of these fucking, you know, like monsters fighting each other. But sometimes if you're really a fan of the fighting and you look at some of the technique of these smaller guys, it's like, uh, you know, some of these is the most exciting fights you're ever going to see in your life. It is the smaller guys, you know. If Demetrius Johnson weighed 185 pounds, he'd have been the biggest superstar on the planet. Yeah, but if my grandmother had the wheels, she would have been a bike. You ever seen that? You ever seen that fucking? I like that one. He goes, <laughs> well, this has any... nothing to do with macaroni cheese. Is there any questions here before we wrap it up here? Um... Before we, we're not going to wrap it up. But this I agree is hot, with you. Hot it is, it, it, that is a very large part of it. I agree with you. I think a lot of it is that people think they could beat the guy, so they're, they're less impressed with him. They're like, oh, yeah, he's only a, he only weighs 125 pounds. I weigh 175. Yeah. I could totally kick his ass. Like, no. It, it's the same thing with, like, uh, men with females, some chimey, like, they look at, like, let's say college basketball females or whatever, mm -hmm. or just WNBA, whatever, and they go, well, I could beat that guy. You know, and in reality, these chicks would hunt circles around them, you know, like, yeah. And I'll tell you what, yeah, well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. You know what I love about that? You put all that you have. What's the white chick's name? Caitlin, whatever, or Something. what's the fucking name? Uh, I love this. They try to keep the bullshit going on one of these ESPN thing, and, like, and she goes, oh, you know what? She was like, I had no problem with that. She's like, I knew we were, all of us was going to be talking shit. She was like, and she's like, I'm actually oh, a big girl fan of that girl. the receiving end of it, it you like, mean? Oh. She put it to bed. So like, now everybody can stop being all bent out of shape, even from both sides, whatever, who is, you know, in this fight. The one who's she's supposed like, who to gives be offended a wasn't offended. She's like, who gives a shit? She was like... We out there talking shit. We competing, okay. and I, I actually am a big fan of that girl. So yeah, I, I I talk shit. She talks shit. Yeah, for fair game, you know. I mean, it's like I love that was the perfect way to handle perfect that. Answer. Instead of oh, I have no chase and class. Who gives a shit, you know? Right. It's like it, it it detracts from how good the fucking game is, you know? Right. Yeah. Sack up. Like it's what yeah. sports. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. And, and newsflash, people talk shit sometimes right, in sports. Exactly, in sports. Exactly. And here's the thing. It would be one thing if she was quiet as a church mouse or whatever, but you know what? She likes to talk shit. That gets totally. her hype. And, you know, that's the way it goes. Yeah. yeah. But I, I love that response. 
I do too. That's great. I didn't hear it before. That's good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear Made that. me even bigger fan of her because she's clearly, look, I got to be honest. First of all, you don't see a lot of even guys playing the scoring that much in college like that. That's yeah. crazy because the games is only go to like 80 points or 75 points for her to be scoring like more than half the points so on funny, a team. Yes. That's a lot. And then on top of that, like, I never seen many people in college, but let alone female, especially female, shooting from Steph Curry distance. Mm -hmm. Like she's doing shit like Damian Lillard shit in a college Top game. It's kind of way outside, yeah. It's very impressive, you know. Cool. And with and with confidence, so like like nice. she knows that she's going in. Nice. It's, it's exciting. Nice, uh, yeah. I watched yeah. the uh, like the last bit of the the guys' game. Well, I saw I saw I, when I first turned it on, it was like it was a blowout. I know, and then, so I turned it on, it was halftime, and then I had to go run an errand, and then when I came back, I saw the last few yeah. games, I was like, oh, You didn't geez. miss nothing. Yeah. It, it, it's a shame, because it just, it, it works out that way sometimes, even Super Bowl yeah. sometimes it's is always, a blowout. You, but UConn's a, dyna, a, a, a dynasty, you know what I mean? So. UConn is great, you, UConn is great, yeah. and let's, let's face it, they had a better team, you know, I mean, those guys, Fresno, I mean, Fresno, uh, San Diego State, Sandy, yeah. they played like, above themselves you know what i mean to get right. there to get so there, it was right. like they was gonna have to play the perfect game and let's face it i watched some of it too the three wasn't wasn't falling and if if, if the three wasn't falling for those guys they had no chance because those guys on yukon was months there's monsters yeah. you see how big those guys They're are big dudes right you can forget about it if, if the three is not dropping you fuck yeah it is yeah. what it is, Paul. It is what it is. Hey, they still have a story to tell. They made it to the big show. You know? Yeah. All right. Well, hey, listen, Hanato. Um, uh, there's fights, you know, this weekend. Where are you going to watch it? Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure. I have a lot of um, uh, Hanato Lalanja business to took care of. So we're going to see. I, I'll, I'll know uh, closer to the fight. Okay. Um, cool. All right. Well, in the meantime, if they want to follow you on social media, and of course they do, where can they find you? Hanato underscore Laranja. But you know that already. That's true. And then um, you can also find this show as an audio download on Stitcher, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. All the other one. Spotify. Spotify. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. You know, I put out a lot of other, uh, MMA stuff, a lot of other MMA videos and things like that. Uh, and, you know, like so for Media Day this weekend, I'll have some videos for the Media Day and stuff. And, um, you know, I put out, you know, different clips and things like that. So it's worth a follow um, and it's, yeah, worth well. a, uh, it's worth a, a sub on Instagram. I'm KB Heat and everywhere else is Karen Bryant, K-A-R-Y-N. Bryant has and Kobe, no relation but may he rest in peace. This was episode 77 with Brandon Royval. As we mentioned, we recently last week had Billy Q, Billy Quarantillo, who's on the same fight card as our guest tonight. So that is in oh, yeah, City. So they're on the same fight card next weekend. And we also had on, but the week before that, Tyson Chartier, who is coaching um, uh, Rob Font, who is Rob fighting Font. this weekend at UFC 287. So you can catch up on a couple of other shows as well. Uh, but as always, we appreciate you guys. Um, we have a lot of uh, regulars here. We really appreciate you guys, our squad, and uh, those of you who are here all the time, and those of you who are new. Thank you for joining us, and hope you enjoyed it. We're, you know, we just try to bring a little, a little levity to the to your world. Somebody said in the comments, "Hot dog, adult toys." That's another market he should be. It into. is. I think you're frozen up right now for me, Hanato. So Perfect. I'm going to say Perfect. goodbye at that point. All right, folks. Ciao. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs> Frozen, man. Why, I... <laughs>